QB, wasn't it? That was a bit... Hey guys, what's up? Smash that like button, etc, etc. Hi, it's me, Adam, as you know, and I am here today to play a game which was voted for by my faithful Twitter following. Uh, it's called Doki Doki Literature Club, and I don't know what it is. Um, I'm going into this completely blind because everybody said in uh, in the replies, hey, don't look it up or anything, but I can gather already that it's a sex game. It's a, it's a dirty, dirty sex game. By the look of the graphics, uh, it's been downloaded. I'm not watched a trade or anything like, like that, but it looks it looks grubby to say the least, um, and creepy as well. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, Doki Doki Literature Club. Literally never even heard of it. Never heard of it. So uh, yeah, there were a lot of people voting. Um, some of the the top the top votes, the most liked uh, suggestions included uh, Tom Campbell with Postman Pat. Um, Habbo Hotel, which I might do later as well, because I've not been on Habbo Hotel in a long, long time. Uh, Fortnite was up there. Uh, what else? GTA was up there. Uh, Sing Star was up there. Oh, no, what's the other one called? Just Dance. One of those ones. How you doing in the chat, by the way, guys? Thank you very much for tuning in. I'm a couple of minutes early because I was good to go. Um, Hello, Live Sierra. Hello, Jay Rogers. Hello, Adam Darling. Hello, Project Darkside. Hello, Falafel Rule. Hello, Gothic Spike. Hello, Lion Cat Jet Gaming, rather. Uh, hello, Aaron Boone. Hello to everyone. Let me know right now where you're from in the chat, and we'll get going in just a couple of minutes. Looking forward to this one. Uh, Callum, hello. What's up? Uh, what is up? Not a great deal. It's been a. What's going on here? Something's happened. Buzzing all over the place. Oh, and it should be better quality, or at least more consistent. As far as like, um, I've got a, I've got a, an Ethernet cable hooked up to my router now, so not relying on wireless anymore. Fingers crossed, things work a little bit better. We got people in from Chicago. We got people in from Australia, Tipperary, Ireland. I thought that was just a song. That's how ignorant I am. It's a long way from Tipperary. Ah. I used to love that when I was a kid. Well, shout out to Tipperary Island, uh, Ipswich, Grimsby, Philly, uh, Bella Vista in Arkansas. I didn't know that was in Arkansas. Tunbridge Wells, Gloucester, Pennsylvania, Scunthorpe, Dubai, Stephen Scott. Hello, Adam. How are you? These streams have helped me a lot. And thank you so much. Thank you very much, Stephen. I'm good. Um, after a really, really shitty fucking cunt of a day yesterday, because I can swear here, it's great. Um, I lost my wallet. I found it today, which is great. Obviously, it's great news because I really like the wallet. There was 40 quid cash in it, so that's good. I've already cancelled my cards, so that's annoying. But hey, better safe than sorry. And now I've got two driving licenses. <laughs> Wonderful stuff. Um, oh, what was that? It's a subscribe, and I've cocked up the alerts box, so I need to move that. Thank you very much. There we go, that should be fixed for next time. How are we doing? We got loads of people in already. How many people have we got watching? I don't even know where to look anymore. I think I've got to refresh it. Twitch Pro Streamer. 318 people watching already. Yeah, looking forward to this. I don't know I, I don't know anything about it. So let's see what happens. Um so I need to get the Twitch chat up there. I need to get the activity stuff up here. I think that's all working. What's the date today? It's the 28th. Back at it again isn't much, but you make me happy in isolation. So here's a pound. Stay safe. Thank you very much, Callum. Much appreciate, my friend. Um, and where do we go? Cheers. Cheers. I think that's it. Yeah, we're good to go. Yeah, I'm really on form today, aren't I, guys? Adam, do you know right now that Amber Moon is streaming and coking on Twitch as well? Uh, no, I did know that she has a Twitch uh, because we raided it the other day, which was a mistake to say the least. Uh, Veilock, thank you very much. A hype train is incoming right now, which is a prompt for me to re remind you that if 
you've got an Amazon Prime subscription. If you've got uh, like Prime Video or whatever it's called, or you've got free Prime delivery, all that stuff. I say free, it costs about 100 quid a year. If you've got that, you can uh, get a free subscription um, through Twitch Prime now. Just log in with your Amazon account. It gives us a couple of quid. Every little bit helps, and that would be lovely. Costs you nothing. Absolutely not a penny. Adam, this is definitely not Skyrim. No, so I, I installed Skyrim. It took ages to download the update file. So I was sat there like a twat for ages. Got on the mod store or whatever it's called. Thank you very much, Scott, as well. Cheers. Um, and, yeah, so I downloaded... And the Macho Man thing isn't there. So I googled, and apparently it was, it was released for PC. And Xbox One, the loser console. It's, it's not fair. I, I don't have any console loyalty because I'm a bad gamer. But... Uh, yeah, you can't get it on PS4, so I won't be doing the Macho Man Randy Savage Dragon mod, which is a shame because I was quite looking forward to that. But there you go. We've all seen Skyrim 50,000 times. I've played it 50,000 times myself, so no big deal. Why not just get it on PC? Because I can't be fucked, to be honest. I cannot be bothered to, to deal with all of that for something that I'll probably only play for two hours, get frustrated with. I won't get frustrated with it because I'm all right at it. Um, but yeah, if Mr. Dubs there, you got Xbox One. Uh, if you've got Skyrim for it, go and have a play on the Macho Man thing. Let me know how it is, because I've never actually seen it. Um, I'd avoid chat for this, Adam. What is this? I Don't tell me what it is. We're going to get going. We're just going to get straight into this. Um, let me sort this out. I don't know how many people are watching, because I've lost that screen. TZ Ven. Seven? Seven? Is that it? Thank you. Thank you very, very much. It's mad. Well, I like mad. Kevin, thank you very much as well. Cheers for the uh, cheers for the subscriptions. Really appreciate it. Okay, so Twitch PC. Um, I assume I'm, I haven't even looked at like the controls of this. I think you might need to be able to see my mouse. There's my cursor. Individuals suffering from anxiety or depression may not have a safe experience. Oh, bollocks. Uh, for contact warnings, please visit that. Okay. I thought this was... Right, Johnny D. Masson. It's going to be a very sexy game, is what they're saying. Why are you playing this game? Because people voted for it. And I am a man of the people. So I guess I need to drag that window up a little bit so you can see it. Um, thank you, So Bizarre. How bizarre? How bizarre? Uh, where's the little screen? There we go. I'll shift this up just a touch. Hopefully, everything's in shot there now and we should be able to see everything. Uh, if, I, if I'm if i too big, I'll resize my window in a little bit. Um, this is going to be amazing. DDLC is great. A lot of sexy, sexy sex perverts in the chat. By playing Doki Doki Literature Club, you agree that you're at least 13 years... 13?! And you consent to your exposure of highly disturbing content. Puns one. thank you very much as well. Uh, I agree. Can you guys hear that? Did you hear the little bing? Bing! Are you going to do voices? Not if it's that sexy. Uh, Chance Guy 5, thank you very much as well. How's the audio? Too loud? Too quiet? It's quite loud in my headphones, but let me know for you guys. Um, how's this all sounding? Is this... Sounding good? Is it sounding good? Why the fuck are we playing this? I don't... I, I literally... I'm giving the people what they want. This was the most liked reply. By some way as well. Uh, so, here we go. Sounds fine, sounds good. Nobody spoil shit. Okay. So, I remember being 16 years old or so when Flash games were all the rage. And there was this uh, this dating sim, which I think is, is this, basically. Trey Willia. Or Willa, sorry. Willia. Trey, thank you very much. Uh, I remember, the, yeah, this dating sim where uh, you had to... You were at a school and you had sex with your sexy teacher. Cillium Wotton. Thank you very much as well. Um, everyone's just saying this is going to be great. It's a great game. Okay. Well, I mean, it, it was free and everything. I didn't even need to like bother with Steam or any of that stuff, which I, I don't have. Um, yeah, and I remember, and I think it's going to be similar to that, where you level up your stats to make you more attractive to women, and then some nipples are probably going to pop up, and then I'll get banned from Twitch. And that's it. Okay. So we're just going to get straight into it. New game. Please enter your name. Adam Pachisi. Oh, just Adam then. No spaces allowed. Hey! 
I see an annoying girl. Oh, how's the text looking? Yeah, it's all going to be. I see an annoying girl running toward me from the distance, waving her arms in the air like she's totally oblivious to any attention she might draw to herself. Thank you very much, Janie J. Uh, that girl is that girl is Sayori, my neighbour and good friend since we were children. This is very loud for me. I'm just going to turn this down a touch in my ears. I don't think this should affect you guys. No, I don't think it is. Uh, Sayori, my neighbour and good friend since we were children. You know, the kind of friend you'd never see yourself making today, but it just kind of works out because you've known each other for so long. We used to walk to school together on days like this, but starting around high school she would oversleep more and more frequently, and I would get tired of waiting up. But if she was going to chase after me like this, I almost feel better off running away. However, I just sigh and idle in front of the crosswalk and let Sayori catch up to me. And here she is. Ha ha! I overslept again. But I caught you this time. Mate. Uh, Coneal, thank you very much as well. Uh, flag your stream as mature content though. Oh, okay, there is sex coming. Brilliant, right. Uh, how do I do that? I'll do that very quickly now because I really don't want to get banned when we've just started. Wait, no, it said you've got to be over 13. Is this... Oh, this will be fine, won't it? It's not going to be that sexy. Um, how do I do this? Create a dashboard. Sorry, you guys were saying that. Um, what is that voice? All right, I, I can't do voices. It'll be mature. It will be mature. Okay. Uh, how do I do this? Oh, I don't know what I'm doing with this thing. Edit, stream info, edit stream info. Oh, I can't do it because it's already started. Can someone let me know how I do this? It's nothing that will get you banned from Twitch. Don't worry. Game is safe for Twitch. Yeah, bollocks to it. All right. Take the chance. Get back to the chat. Um, okay. Cool. Uh... Maybe, but only because I decided to stop and wait for you. Yeah, you say that like you're thinking about ignoring me. That's mean, Adam. Well, if people stare at you for acting weird, then I don't want them to think we're a couple or something. Fine, fine. But you did wait for me after all. I guess you don't have it in you to be mean, even if you want to. Whatever you say, Sayori. Hey, hey, hey. We cross the street together and make our way to school. As we draw near, the streets become increasingly speckled with other students making their daily commute. By the way, Adam, have you decided on a club to join yet? A club? I told you already, I'm not really interested in joining any clubs. I haven't been looking either. Eh, that's not true. You told me you would join a club this year. Did I? I'm sure it's possible that I did in one of our many conversations where I dismissively go along with whatever she's going on about. That's my internal monologue. Sayori starts to... Thank you very much, KJ Sandwich. Uh, Sayori likes to worry a bit too much about me. Uh, when I'm perfectly content just getting uh, by on the average while spending my free time on games and anime. This is so me. Uh, uh-huh. I was talking about how I'm worried that you won't learn, learn how to socialise or have any, have any skills before college. This is me. Uh, your happiness is really important to me, you know? And I know you're happy now, but I die at the thought of you becoming a neat in a few years because you're not used to the real world. What's a neat? You trust me, right? Don't make me keep worrying about you. All right, all right. I'll look at a few clubs if it makes you happy. No promises, though. Will you at least promise me you'll try a little? Yeah, I guess I'll promise you that. Yay! Why do I let myself get lectured by such a carefree girl? More than that, I'm surprised I even let myself relent to her. I guess seeing her worry so much about me won't, makes me want to ease her mind at least a little bit. Even if she does exaggerate everything in her head. Thank you very much. The hype train is a uh, choo-choo-chewing. We're in the classroom. Uh, the school day is as ordinary as ever, and it's over before I know it. After I pack up my things, I stare blankly at the wall, looking for an ounce of motivation. Clubs. Sayori wants me to check out some clubs. I guess I have no choice but to start with the anime club. Hello! Sayori? Sayori must have come into the classroom while I was spacing out. Thank you very much for your donation. I will just read that out right now. Hey Adam, question. First, what do you think about Adam Blompier joining WrestleTalk? Good for him. Uh, and if you could pass this next thing on to Ross, that'd be great. I want to apologise for calling him a wank feather in an elimination chamber on my cultaholic side. I don't think he could give a shite, Frank, but I will... I will pass that on to him. Yeah, yeah, no, good for good for Blompier. Uh, he seems to be having a lot of fun over there. So, wonderful. Back to the sexy, weird thing. 
I look around and realize that I'm the only one left in the classroom. I thought I'd catch you coming out of the classroom, but I saw you just sitting here and spacing out, so I came in. Honestly, you're even worse than me sometimes. I'm impressed. You don't need to wait up for me if it's going to make you late to your own club, Sayori. Well, I thought you might need some encouragement, so I thought, you know, know what? Well, that you could come to my club. Sayori? Yeah? There is no way I'm going to your club. Eh, meanie. Sayori is vice president of the Literature Club. Not that I was ever aware that she had any interest in literature. In fact, I'm 99% sure that she only did it because she thought it would be fun to st help start a new club. Since she was the first one to show interest after the one who proposed the club, she inherited the title of Vice President. That said, my interest in literature is guaranteed to be even less. Yeah, I'm gonna go to the anime club. Come on, please! Why do you care so much anyway? Well... I kind of told the club yesterday that I'd bring in a new member. Well, that's your fucking fu- And Natsuki made cupcakes and everything. <laughs> Don't make promises you can't keep. I can't tell if Sayori is really that much of an airhead or if she's cunning to have planned this all out. I let out a long sigh. <sighs> Fine, I'll stop by for a cupcake, okay? Yes, let's go. And thus, today marks the day I sold my soul for a cupcake. I dejectedly follow Sayori across the school and upstairs, a section of the school I rarely visit, being generally used for third year classes and activities. Uh, Sayori, full of energy, swings open the classroom door. Everyone, the new member's here! I told you, don't call me a new member, Sayori! Ah, uh, I glance around the room. Girl one. Welcome to the Literature Club. It's a pleasure meeting you. Sayori says, always says nice things about you. Girl 2, not so happy. Seriously? You brought a boy? Way to kill the atmosphere. Ah, Adam, what a nice surprise, says Girl 3. Uh, welcome to the club. I pause. All words escape me in this situation. This club is full of incredibly cute girls! Girl 2, what are you looking at? This is really fucking creepy, isn't it? What are you looking at? If you want to say something, say it. S sorry Natsuki! Hmm. The girl with the sour attitude, whose name is apparently Natsuki, is the one I don't recognise. Uh, her small figure makes me think she's possibly a first year. She's also the one who made cupcakes, according to Sayori. You can just ignore her when she gets moody. Sayori says that quietly into my ear, then turns back toward the other girls. Anyway, this is Natsuki, always full of energy. And this is Yuri, the smartest in the club. D don't say things like that! Yuri, who appears complete, uh, comparably more mature and timid, seems to have a hard time keeping up with people like Sayori and Natsuki. Ah, well it's nice to meet both of you. And it sounds like you already know Monica, is that right? That's right! It's great to see you again, Adam. Monica smiles sweetly and bends over. We do know each other. Well, we rarely talked, but we were in the same class last year. Monica was probably the most popular girl in the class. Smart, beautiful, uh, beautiful, <laughs> athletic, basically completely out of my league. So, having her smile at me so genuinely feels a little... erotic? You too, Monica. Come sit down, Adam. We made room for you at the table so you can sit next to me or Monica. I'll get the cupcakes. Hey, I made them. I'll get them. Sorry, I got a little too excited. Then how about I make some tea as well? This is a great club, isn't it? The girls have a few desks arranged to form a table. As Sayori mentioned, it's been widened so that there is one space next to Monica and one space next to Sayori. Natsuki and Yuri walk over to the corner of the room where Natsuki grabs a wrapped tray and Yuri opens the closet. Still feeling awkward, I take a seat next to Sayori. Natsuki proudly marches back to the table, tray in hand. Okay, are you ready? Ta-da! Woo! No, whoa! Natsuki lifts the foil off the tray to reveal a dozen white, fluffy cupcakes decorated to look like little cats. The whiskers are drawn with icing and little pieces of chocolate were used to make ears. So cute! 
I had no idea you were so good at baking, Natsuki. <laughs> well, you know. Just hurry and take one. Sayori grabs one first, then Monica. I follow. It's delicious! Sayori talks with her mouth full and has already managed to get icing on her face. I turn the cupcake around in my fingers, looking for the best angle to take a bite. Natsuki is quiet. I can't help but notice, notice her sneaking glances in my direction. Is she waiting for me to take a bite? I finally bite down. The icing is sweet and full of flavour. I wonder if she made it herself. This is really good! Thank you, Natsuki! Well, why are you thanking me? It's not like I... Haven't I heard this somewhere before? Made them for you or anything? Eh? I thought you technically did. Sayori said, well, maybe. But not for, you, you know, you, dummy. Alright, alright. I give up on Natsuki's weird logic and dismiss the conversation. Yuri returns to the table carrying a tea set. She carefully places a teacup in front of each of us before setting down the teapot next to the cupcake tray. You keep a whole tea set in this classroom? Don't worry, the teachers gave us permission, says Yuri. After all, it doesn't take a hot cup of tea to help you enjoy a good book? Uh, I guess. Eh, don't let yourself get intimidated. Yuri's just trying to impress you. Eh, that's not. Insulted, Yuri looks away. I mean that, you know. I believe you. Well, tea and reading might not be a pastime for me, but at least I enjoy tea. I'm glad. Yuri faintly smiles to herself in relief. Monica raises an eyebrow, then smiles at me. So, what made you consider the Literature Club? Um, I was afraid of this question. Something tells me I shouldn't tell Monica that I was practically dragged here by Sayori. Well, I haven't joined any clubs yet, and Sayori seemed really happy here, so that's okay, don't be embarrassed. We'll make sure you feel right at home, okay? Um, as president of the Literature Club, it's my duty to make the club fun and exciting for everyone. Monica, I'm surprised. How come you decided to start your own club? You could probably be a board member for any of the major clubs. Weren't you a leader of the debate club last year? She bends over. Ah! Well, you know. To be honest, I can't stand all of the politics around the major clubs. It feels like nothing but arguing about the budget and publicity and how to prepare for events. I'd much rather take something I personally enjoy and make something special out of it. And if it encourages others to get into literature, I'm fulfilling that dream. Monica really is a great leader, says Sayori. Yuri also nods in agreement. Then I'm surprised there aren't more people in the club yet. It must be hard to start a new club. You could put it that way. Not many people are very interested in putting out all the effort to start something brand new. Especially when it's something that doesn't grab your attention, like literature. You have to work hard to convince people that you're both fun and worthwhile. We're all learning something here, isn't this nice? Uh, but it makes school events like the festival that much more important. I'm confident that we can all really grow this club before we graduate. Right, everyone? Yeah! We'll do our best. Less enthusiastic. Shame. You know it! <laughs> everyone enthusiastically agrees. Such different girls, all interested in the same goal. Monica must have worked really hard just to find these three. Maybe that's why they were all so delighted by the idea of a new member joining. Though I still don't really know if I can keep up with their level of enthusiasm about literature. So Adam, what kind of things do you like to read? Well, uh, considering how little I've read these past few years, I don't really have a good way of answering that. I hope Adam doesn't stop after day. This game takes three or four hours to get into the hot action. Are you taking the fucking piss? Manga. Uh, I mutter quietly to myself, half joking. Natsuki's head suddenly perks up. Perky head. It looks like she wants to say something, but she keeps quiet. No, not much of a reader, I guess. Well, that can change. What am I saying? I spoke without thinking after seeing Yuri's sad smile. Anyway, what about you, Yuri? Well, let's see. Yuri traces the rim of her teacup with her finger. Here we go. My favourites are usually novels that build deep and complex fantasy worlds. The level of creativity and craftsmanship behind them is amazing to me. And telling a good story in such a foreign world is equally impressive. Yuri goes on, clearly passionate about her reading. 
She seems so reserved and timid since the moment I walked in, but it's obvious by the way her eyes light up that she finds her comfort in the world of books, not people. But you know, I like a lot of things. Stories with deep psychological elements that usually immerse me as well. Isn't it amazing how a writer can so deliberately take advantage of your own lack of imagination to completely throw you for a loop? Anyway, I've been reading a lot of horror lately. Ah, I read a horror book once. I desperately grasp something I can relate to at the minimal level. At this rate, Yuri might as well be having a conversation with a rock. Really? I wouldn't have expected that, Yuri. For someone as gentle as you, I guess you could say that, but if a story makes me think or takes me to another world, then I really can't put it down. Surreal horror is often very successful at changing the way you look at the, at the world, for only, if only for a brief moment, sorry. Ugh. I hate horror, says Natsuki. Oh, why is that? Well, I just... Natsuki, thank you very much, bro Sidon, for your subscription. Natsuki's eyes dart over to me for a split second. Never mind. That's right, you usually write about cute things, don't you, Natsuki? What? What, what gives you that idea? I don't know why I'm doing that. You left a piece of scrap paper behind last club meeting. Uh, it looked like you were working on a poem called... Don't say it out loud, and give that back. Fine, fine. Eh! Your cupcakes, your poems, everything you do is just as cute as you are. Sayori slight siddles up behind Natsuki and puts her hands on her shoulders. I'm not cute! Natsuki, you write your own poems? Eh, well, I guess sometimes. Why do you care? I think that's impressive. Why don't you share them sometime? No, no! Natsuki averts her eyes. You wouldn't like them. Ah, not a very confident writer yet. I understand how Natsuki feels. Sharing that level of writing takes more than just confidence. The truest form of writing is writing to oneself. You must be willing to open up to your readers, exposing your vulnerabilities and showing even the deepest reaches of your heart. Do you have writing experience too, Yuri? Maybe if you share some of your work, you can set an example and help that Suki feel comfortable enough to share hers. <clears throat> she hesitates. A bead of sweat rolls down her cheek. I guess it's the same for Yuri. Ah, oh, I wanted to read everyone's poems. We all sit in silence for a moment. Monica bends over. Okay, I have an idea, everyone. Hmm. Natsuki and Yuri look quizzically at Monica. Let's all go home and write a poem of our own. Then next time we meet, we'll all share them with each other. That way, everyone's even. Uh, um... Uh, yeah, let's do it! Go on! Plus, now that we have a new member, I think it will help us all get a little bit more comfortable with each other and strengthen the bond of the club. Isn't that right, Adam? Monica smiles warmly at me once again. Hold on, there's still one problem. Eh? What's that? Now that we're back to the original topic of me joining the club, I bluntly come forth with what's been on my mind the entire time. I never said I would join this club. Sayori may have convinced me to stop by, but I never made any decision. I still have other clubs to look at, and, um... I lose my train of thought. All four girls stare back at me with dejected eyes. But, but... I'm sorry, I thought... <laughs> Adam! You all... I'm defenceless against these girls. How am I supposed to make a clear-headed decision when it's like this? That is, if writing poems is the price I need to pay in order to spend every day with these beautiful girls... Right. Okay, I've decided then. I'll join the literature club! One by one, the girls' eyes light up. Yes! I'm so happy! Sayori wraps her arms around me, jumping up and down. Hey! You really did scare me for a moment. If you really just came for the cupcakes, I would be super pissed. Monica bends over. Then that makes it official. Welcome to the Literature Club! Ah, thanks I guess. Okay everyone, I think with that we can officially end today's meeting on a good note. Everyone remember tonight's assignment. Write a poem to bring to the next meeting so that we can all share. Monica looks over at me once more. Adam, I look forward to seeing how you express yourself. 
<laughs> she bends out. Yeah. Uh, can I really impress the class star Monica with my mediocre writing skills? I already feel the anxiety welling up inside me. Meanwhile, the girls continue to chit-chat as Yuri and Natsuki clean up their food. Hey Adam, since we're already here, do you want to walk home together? That's right, Sayori and I never walk home together anymore because she always stayed after school for clubs. Sure, might as well. Yay! Cool. With that, the two of us depart the club room and make our way home. The whole way, my mind wanders back and forth between the four girls. Sayori, Natsuki, Yuri, and of course, Monica. Will I really be happy spending every day after school in a literature club? Perhaps I'll have the chance to grow closer to one of these girls. Alright, I'll just need to make the most of my circumstances and I'm sure good fortune will find me. And I guess that starts with writing a poem tonight. Who do you fancy so far? I guess Monica. I know that's the obvious choice. But I think Monica is the, the sexiest of the anime schoolgirls. Uh, pick words do you think your favourite club member will like. Finally, a bit of gameplay. Uh, something good might happen with whoever likes your poem the most. Oh, what the fuck? Uh, anger, scars, lucky, hurt, special land, anxiety, cheer, puff, time. Um, anger? Tenacious. Sugar. Climax. Sensation. Explode. Uh, swimsuit. This is a bit. Uh, unrequited. No, pure. Spinning. Parfait. Uh, uncontrolled bed. Sexy bed. Uh, oh, why am I trying? Skirt. <laughs> Boop! Oh, see, I, I can, is this them reacting to it? I didn't even notice that. Agonizing. Okay, so the dark hair one likes mucky, like, angry words. Crimson, she'll like that. Yeah, see? Right, well, I'll go for dark hair there. Uh, pain. Oh, okay. Uh, determination. Feather. Fireworks. Doki Doki. I don't know what that means. Kawaii means cute. I know that. And Kitty. Monica bends over. Hi again, Adam. Glad to see you didn't run away on us. <laughs> nah, don't worry. This might be a little bit strange for me, but at least I keep my word. Well, I'm back at the literature club. I was the last to come in, so everyone else is already hanging out. Thanks for keeping your promise, Adam. Yeah, I'm going to go for Yuri, actually. Yuri is, is the, the the one I'm most into. Um, I like the hair. I hope this isn't too overwhelming of a commitment for you. Making you dive he headfirst into literature when you're not accustomed to it. Oh, come on! Like he deserves any slack. Sayori told me you didn't even want to join any clubs this year. And last year, too. I don't know if you plan to just come here and hang out or what. She's a fucking bitch, isn't she? But if you don't take her seriously, then you won't see the end of it. Natsuki, you certainly have a big mouth for somebody who keeps a manga collection in the club room. Yeah, you fucking twat. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> I think that was her going, m -m 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 -m. Uh, Natsuki finds herself stuck between saying Monica and manga. Manga is literature! Swiftly defeated, Natsuki plops back into her seat. Don't worry, guys. Adam always gives it his best as long as he's having fun. He helps me with uh, he helps me with busy work without me even asking, like cooking, cleaning my room. How dependable! Sayori, that's because your room is so messy; it's distracting, and you almost set your house on fire once. Is that so? <laughs> you two are really good friends, aren't you? I might be a little jealous. Yes, fucking have it. Come on. How come you and Adam can become good friends too? Yeah, Yuri. Uh, um, she plays with her hair. If I know anything 
about women, it's the street song. Uh, if she plays with her hair, she's probably keen, uh, being one of the lyrics. I saw this thing on ITV the other week. That if she plays with her, share, her hair, she's probably keen. She's playing with her hair more regularly. Well, regularly. You know what I'm getting at. Yuri. Sayori? Hmm. As usual, Sayori seems oblivious to the weird situation she just put me into. Uh, oh, oh, Yuri even brought you something today, you know. W wait, Sayori? Eh, me? Um, not really. Don't be shy. It's really nothing. What is it? N never mind. Playing with her hair again. Sayori made it sound like a big deal when it's really not. Uh, what do I do? I'm sorry, Yuri. I wasn't thinking. I guess that means it's up to me to rescue this situation. Hey, don't worry about it. First of all, I wasn't expecting anything in the first place. So any nice gesture from you is a pleasant surprise. It'll make me happy no matter what. It, is that so? Yeah, I won't make it into a big deal if you don't want it to be. All right, well, here. Yuri reaches into her bag and pulls out a book, which is disappointing. I didn't want you to feel left out, so I picked out a book that I thought you might enjoy. It's a short read, so it should keep your attention even if you don't usually read. And we could, you know, you know, discuss it if you wanted. The, this is, how is this girl accidentally being so cute? She even picked out a book she thinks I'll like, despite me not even reading that much. Yuri, thank you. I'll definitely read this. I enthusiastically take the book. Fucking grabbing it. Phew! Well, you can read it at your own pace. <laughs> this is so fucking weird. I look forward to hearing what you think. Now that everyone's settled in, I expected Monica to kick off some scheduled activities for the club. But that doesn't seem to be the case. Sayori and Monica are having a cheery conversation in the corner. Yuri's face is already buried in a book. I can't help but notice her intense expression, like she was waiting for this chance. Meanwhile, Natsuki is rummaging around in the closet. Ugh! I hear Natsuki utter an exasperated sigh from within the closet. She seems to be annoyed by something. I approach her in case she needs a hand. Oh, I don't like this. You looking for something in there? Freaking Monica. She never puts my stuff back in the right spot. What's the point in keeping your collection organized if someone else is just going to mess it up? Natsuki slides a bunch of stacked books and boxes across the shelf. Manga. You read manga, right? Ugh. Sometimes. Thank you very much, Caffeine Crash. Manga is one of those things where you can't really admit you're really into it until you figure out if the other person likes it too. How did you know, anyway? I heard you bring it up at some point. I did say that earlier, didn't I? Uh, besides, it's kind of written on your face. What's that supposed to mean? I... I see. There's a lone volume of manga amidst a stack of various books on the side of one of the shelves. Curious, I pull it out from the stack. There it is! <laughs> Where's Cool Cat? There he is! Natsuki snatches it. She then tries to... She then turns to a box of manga and slips the volume right into the middle of the rest. Ah, much better. Seeing a box set with one book missing is probably the most irritating sight in the world. I know that feel. I get a closer look at the box set she's admiring. Parfait Girls? Uh, it's a series I've never heard of in my life. That probably means it's either way out of my demographic or it's simply terrible. If you're going to judge, you can do it through the glass on that door. She points to the classroom door. Hey, I wasn't judging anything. I didn't even say anything. It was the tone of your voice. But I'll, let, I'll tell you one thing, Adam. Consider this a lesson straight from the literature club. Don't judge a book by its cover. In fact, Natsuki pulls out the first volume of Parfait Girls from the box. I'm going to show you exactly why. She shoves the book right into my hands. Ah, I stare at the cover. It features four girls in colourful attire striking animated feminine poses. It's exceedingly mo. What? Mo? It's exceedingly mo. How is this a wrestling stream? Well, we'll get there. Dodgy Cactus, thank you very much. Don't just stand there. What? <laughs> I think there's like, you what? 
Natsuki grabs my arm and pulls me out of the closet. She then takes a seat against the wall beneath the windowsills. She pats on the ground next to her, signalling me to sit there. Wouldn't chairs be more comfortable? I take my seat. Chairs wouldn't work. We can't read at the same time like that. Yeah? Why is that? Ah, uh, I guess it's easy to be close together like this. I don't like her, so I'm not really interested in whatever she's getting at here, to be honest. Exclamation mark. She, do you see the, the pain on her face or that she's, she's concerned, alarmed in some way? Uh, don't really know what's, what's going on here. D don't just say that. You'll make me feel weird about it. Natsuki crosses her arms and scooches away an inch from me. Sorry. I didn't exactly expect to be sitting this close to her either. Not that I can say it's a particularly bad thing. That's Adam the character's thoughts, not Adam the human being. <clears throat> I open the book. It's only a few seconds before Natsuki once again inches closer, reclaiming the additional space while she hopes I won't notice. I can feel her peering over my shoulder, much more eager to begin reading than I am. Wow, how long has it been since I read the beginning? Hmm? You don't go back and flip through the older volumes every now and then? Not really. Maybe sometimes after I've already finished the series. Hey, are you paying attention? Uh, I am. But nothing's really happened yet, so I can't talk at the same time. It looks like it's a bunch of about a bunch of friends in high school. Typical slice of life affair. I kind of grew out of these since it's rare for the writing to be entertaining enough to make up for the lack of plot. So, what should I expect from this? Is there going to be a plot? Well, obviously. You think I would enjoy something that didn't have a plot? I mean, well, I guess I know what you're saying. A lot of the beginning is about simple things. Like, there's a really funny chapter where they're obsessed with a guy at the ice cream shop. But that just helps to get you know, to know the characters. And besides, it's still entertaining, but later on there's all kinds of drama. Like when they get into all their backstories and when some of the romance starts to happen. That's really what makes it so good. There are so many touching parts. Touching parts. Ah, is that so? It sounds like you really know what you're talking about. Maybe I underestimated you. Eh. <laughs> hey, wait. What's that supposed to mean? Ooh, ah? Natsuki gives me a little shove. I just mean... I just meant that I haven't seen you at your full power. Hmm, good save. Ah, this chapter seems like it's about baking. This is just a guess, but is there a lot of baking in this manga? Well... Natsuki pauses for a moment, as if she doesn't want to admit something. Yeah. Why does that matter? It doesn't. I was just, just curious. Since you enjoy baking too, right? That's just a coincidence. I just happened to get into baking around the same time I got this manga. Like I would ever get into anything because it's dinner manga. I feel bad for anyone that impressionable. Ah, uh, definitely not a coincidence. I guess that explains Natsuki's interest in baking. Still, of all the hobbies to pick up from a manga, that's definitely one of the better ones. Not to mention she's really good at it, so who am I to judge? Oof. Okay, uh, we read on for a few more minutes. I finished a couple of chapters at this point. Are you sure this isn't boring for you? It's not! Even though you're just watching me read? Well, I'm fine with that. If you say so, I guess it's fun sharing something you like with something else. Someone else, sorry. I always get excited when I convince any of my friends to pick up a series I enjoy. You know what I mean? Uh, hmm? You don't? Um, that's not... Well, I wouldn't really know. Oh, she's got no mates, has she? What do you mean? Don't you share your manga with your friends? Could you not rub it in? Jeez. Ah. Sorry. Hmm. Like I could ever get my friends to read this. They just think manga's for kids. I can't even bring it up without them being all like, Eh? You still haven't grown out of that yet? Makes me want to punch them in the face. Ugh, I know those kind of people. Honestly, it takes a lot of effort to find friends who don't judge. Much less friends who are also into it. I'm already kind of a loser, so I guess I gravitated toward the other losers over time. 
Is it really hitting home, this? Uh, but it's probably harder for someone like you. Hmm. Yeah, that's pretty accurate. Wait, which part? I mean, I feel like I can't even keep it in my own room. I don't even know what my dad would do if he found this. At least it's safe here in the club room. Except Monica was kind of a jerk about it. Ugh, I just can't win, can I? Well, it paid off in the end, didn't it? I mean, here I am, reading it. Well, it's not like that solves any of my problems. Maybe. But at least you're enjoying yourself, right? So? Ah! <laughs> Jeez, that's enough. Are you going to keep reading or what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I flip the page. Suddenly, Natsuki starts laughing. <laughs> I totally forgot that happens. Natsuki puts her finger on one of the panels. Minori is my favourite character. You always feel a little bad for her, since she's so unlucky. But it gets especially bad when... Ooh! I shouldn't be talking about that yet. Just finish this chapter. <clears throat> Natsuki's voice sparkles with excitement. It's a stark contra contrast to her usually bossy tone. But if she's not used to sharing her favourite manga with her friends, I can understand why. It's hard to express in words the feeling you get when connecting with someone like that. And being able to provide that to Natsuki, for whom it's a rare experience, the thought makes me smile a little to myself. Okay, everyone! Eh? Are you all ready with today's poems? Oh, come on! Can your timing be any worse? Monica bends over. Sorry. I just need to make sure we have enough time. Well, you do look pretty cosy over there. <laughs> eh? Ah, uh ah! -uh. Natsuki suddenly notices how close she's gotten to me. I bet she does. Uh, she hastily slides herself a good 12 inches away from me. Alright, I guess I'll stop here for now. I close the book and hand it towards Natsuki. You're just giving it back? Don't you want to know what happens? Uh, yeah, but Monica just said, Don't be dumb. Just take it home with you. Eh? Is that really alright? I say that mostly because I really didn't plan on using my spare time to read this. Well, of course. It would take forever for you to finish if you didn't take it home. Just finish that one before tomorrow so we can start the next one. And if it gets bent, I'll kill you. By tomorrow? I only got part way through the volume so far. I might fall behind on some shows if I try to get through this. But I suppose that's a necessary sacrifice in exchange for seeing Natsuki's enthusiastic face. Or am I more scared of what will happen if I don't finish it? Alright then, I stand up. I return to where I put my stuff and carefully slip the book into my bag. By the way, did you remember to write a poem last night? Yeah, I fucking did. Uh, my relaxation ends. I can't believe I agreed to do something so embarrassing. I couldn't really find much inspiration since I've never really done this before. Well, now that everyone's ready, why don't you find someone to share with? I can't wait! Sayori and Monica enthusiastically pull out their poems. Sayori's on, uh, Sayori is on a wrinkled sheet of loose leaf torn from a spiral notebook. On the other hand, Monica wrote hers in a composition notepad. I can already see Monica's pristine handwriting, handwriting sorry, from where I sit. Natsuki and Yuri reluctantly comply as well, reaching into their bags. I do the same myself. Who should I show my poem to first? Uh, Yuri, because she's the best one. Yuri seems the most experienced, so I should start with her. I can trust her opinion, to be fair. Hello. Mmm. 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 Yuri stares at the poem. A minute passes, more than enough time for her to finish reading. Um, oh, so, sorry, I forgot to start speaking. Uh, um, it's fine, don't force yourself. I'm not, I just need to put my thoughts into words. Hold on, okay, this is your first time writing a poem, right? Uh, yeah, why do you ask? I'm just making sure, I guess that it might be after reading through it, oh, fucking hell. Uh, ah. Uh. So it's that bad. No! Did I just raise my voice? Ugh, I'm so sorry. Yuri buries her face in her hands. I couldn't help but notice that it's been several minutes and we really haven't gotten anywhere. It might take Yuri a while to get used to new people. 
It's fine. I really didn't notice. What were you saying? Right. Um, it's just that there are specific writing habits that are usually typical of new writers. And having been through that myself, I kind of learned to pick up on them. I think that's the most notable, notable thing I recognise in new writers is that they try to make their style very deliberate. In other words, they tend to, to pick a writing style separate from the topic matter and they form fit the two together. The end result is that both the style and the expressiveness are weakened. Once she refines her train of thought, it's as if her demeanour totally changes. Her stammering is completely gone and she sounds like an expert. Of course, that's not something you can be blamed for. There are so many different skills and techniques that go into writing even a simple poem. Not just finding them and building them, but getting them to work together is probably the most challenging part. Uh, it might take you some time, but it all comes with practice and by learning, uh, and learning by example, and trying new things. I also hope that everyone else in the club gives you valuable feedback. Natsuki can be a little bit biased though. Biased? How? Uh, um, well... Never mind. I shouldn't be talking about people like that. Sorry. It's fine. I'm not sure if Yuri is apologising to herself, or me, or to Natsuki. Do you mind if I read your poem now? Please do! I'd love to share my thought process behind it. I'm gonna fucking bury this shitty poem, by the way. Fucking taking the piss out of me, first time writer. Yuri smiles dreamily, as if that's a rare opportunity for her. Which itself is kind of funny. After all, this is, isn't this supposed to be a literature club? Uh, ghost under the light. The tendrils of my hair illuminate beneath the amber glow. Bathing. It must be this one. The last remaining street light to have withstood the test of time. The last yet to be replaced by the sickening blue-green hue of the future. I bathe. Calm, breathing... Calm. Breathing air of the present, but living in the past. The light flickers. I flicker back. Uh... Click outside poem area to continue. Well, it was fucking shit, Yuri, to be honest. Uh, two stars? I'm sorry I have such terrible handwriting. That was a fucking struggle. I've got a big TV here as well, Yuri. What? I wasn't thinking that at all. But it took you a long time to read. Yeah, because it was fucking shit and tedious, Yuri. Ah, well, I just don't read script very often. I actually think your handwriting is pretty. Eh? That's a relief. Also... I liked the poem, even though it's short, it was really descriptive. It wasn't too short. I usually write longer poems. Not at all. I'm really glad you like it. I'll be honest, since it's our first time sharing, I wanted to write something a little more mild. You read something easy to digest, I suppose. Are you into ghosts, Yuri? What? Uh, hoo hoo! Actually, the story isn't about a ghost at all, Adam. Really? I must have totally missed the point. Well, I suppose you did only glance over it, after all. But remember that poems of, uh, poets often express their own thoughts, feelings, and experiences in their own works. They usually do more than tell a simple story or paint a picture. In this case, perhaps the subject of the poem is only being symbolically compared to a ghost. Lingering in her last remaining place of comfort, unable to let go of the past, and soon to be left with nothing. And that's a lot more solemn, putting it that way. Uh, I hadn't even thought of that. That's impressive. It's nothing, really. Well, it makes me happy that you think that. Just remember that it won't be long before you pick up on these things too. Yeah, maybe you're right. I guess I'll have to keep trying. I'm counting on you. Oh, for fucks, I don't... I don't want to show my poem to... I... Monica was the next man. Uh, <laughs> fucking hell, what am I saying? Uh, right, she is calling me stupid, I agree. Um, Monica says, hello Adam. Having a good time so far? Uh, yeah, good, glad to hear her. By the way, since you're new and everything, if you ever have any suggestions for the club, like new activities or things we can do better, I'm always listening. Don't be afraid to bring these things up, okay? Alright, I'll keep that in mind. Of course I'll be afraid to bring things up. I'm much better off just going with the flow until I'm more settled in. Anyway, want me to share, uh, want to share your poem with me? It's kind of embarrassing, but I guess I have to. Monica bends over. <laughs> Don't worry, Adam. We're all a little embarrassed today, you know, <laughs> but it's that sort of barrier we'll all learn to get past soon. 
Yeah, that's true. I hand Monica my poem. Mm-hmm. I like it, Adam. Really? It's a lot cuter than I expected. <laughs> oh, jeez. No, no. It kind of makes me think of something that Suki would write. And she's a good writer, too. Monica bends over. So take that as a compliment. <laughs> if you say so. Yep. By any chance have you read anything by Shel Silverstein? Yeah, maybe a long time ago. He's famous for telling all kinds of stories in just a few simple words. His poems can be funny, endearing, or even sad. And sometimes they're only a few lines long, and they might even feel like they're written for kids. But if you think about them, they can express views of the world that would apply to anybody. I see. So you're saying that Natsuki is kind of like that? Sort of. Maybe she's not an expert, but you probably won't find much filler in her poems. They might be easy to write, but they're super challenging to get the meaning through. Porcelain Pumpkin, thank you for giving me a break from this. While I read your donation, because it's too small for me to read right there. Late to the stream, does Adam still think this is a hentai game? Uh, well, we haven't seen it. There's nothing sexy yet. Um, they're being suggestive, so we haven't gotten into any of the... Uh, mucky bits so far. And by the way, thank you very much to Falafel Rule, Cozzy, and Square Go Gamers for your cheers. Much appreciated, guys. How many people are watching this? I'm just going to take a, a quick two-minute break. Just while I get my head together, because this is quite exhausting. 700 and fucking 19 people watching. What is wrong with you fucking mentalists? What's wrong with me? I'm the one fucking sat here. Right. They might be easy to write, but they're super challenging to get the meaning through. So, I can see why it'd be your kind of poem to explore. I'm sure I'll end up trying different things a lot. It could take a while before I feel comfortable doing this. That's okay. I'd love to see you try new things. That's the best way to find the kind of style that suits you. Everyone else might be a little bit biased towards their own kinds of styles, but I'll always help you find what suits you the most. So don't force yourself to write the way everyone else wants you to write. It's not like you have to worry about impressing them or anything. Monica bends over. <laughs> anyway, do you want to read my poem now? Don't worry, I'm not very good. You sound pretty confident for someone who claims to be not very good. Well, that's because I have to sound confident. That doesn't mean I always feel that way, you know? I see. Well, let's read it then. Hole in wall. It couldn't have been me. See the direction the spackle protrudes. A noisy neighbour? An angry boyfriend? I'll never know. I wasn't home. I peer inside for a clue. No! I can't see! I reel, blind, like a film left out in the sun. But it's too late. My retinas, already scorched with a permanent copy of the meaningless image. It's just a little hole. It wasn't too bright. It was too deep. Stretching forever into every- I know what she's getting at here. A hole of infinite choices. I realise now that I wasn't looking in. I was looking out, and he on the other side was looking in. So, what do you think? I, you know what, I actually like that. I think that's a nice... Hmm, it's very freeform, if that's what you call it. Sorry, I'm really not the right person to ask for feedback. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, that kind of style has gotten pretty popular nowadays. That is, a lot of poems have been putting emphasis on the timing between words and lines. When I performed out loud, when performed out loud, sorry, it can be really powerful. I'm going to lay down and make myself com uh, comfy here, because I think this is going to go on for about fucking ten hours. I can't promise I'm going to get through it all tonight. But I'm pretty engrossed, I won't lie. Bit of leg for you, baby. Um. What was the inspiration behind this one? Ah, well, I'm not sure if I know how to put it. I guess you could say that I had some kind of epiphany recently. It's been influencing my poems a bit. An epiphany? Yeah, something like that. I'm kind of nervous to talk about deep stuff like that because it's kind of coming on strongly. Come on me strongly. Maybe after everyone is better friends with each other. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes when you're writing a poem or a story, your brain gets too fixated on a specific point. If you try so hard to make it perfect, then you'll never make any progress. Just force yourself to get something down on paper and tidy it up later. Another way to think about it is this. If you keep your pen in the same spot for too long, you'll just get a big, dark puddle of ink. So just move your hand and go with the flow. 
That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Cheers, Monica. I've got to do the others now. Uh, Sayori. Not a fan. This is a good poem, Adam. Are you sure it's your first time? Of course. It's not that good. Am I the kind of guy who'll be writing poems in his spare time? <laughs> I guess you're right. But that's why it impressed me. Well, to be honest, I was afraid that you wouldn't do it seriously, or that you wouldn't write one at all. I'm really happy that you uh, wrote this one. I'm just happy that you wrote one, sorry. It just reminds me of how you're really part of the club now. Not to mention the fact that I'm standing in front of you in the club room, you fucking bitch. Uh, well, of course. I'm not really into it yet, but that doesn't mean I'll break my promise. See? It's like I said before, Adam. Deep down, you're not selfish at all, you know? Trying new things like this for other people, that's something that only really good people do. Thanks, Sayori. I'm not sure if Sayori sees the full picture of my motive here. Dirty. Then again, I can't deny that she's part of the reason that I joined. Knowing how much this means to her and all. Yeah. And I'm going to make sure you have lots of fun here, okay? Fucking yes. That will be my way of thanking you. Alright, I'm going to hand you- I'm going to hold you to that then. Yay! Now, you'll read my poem too, right? Don't worry, I'm really bad at this. <clears throat> we'll see about that. Dear Sunshine, The way you glow through my blinds in the morning- She is fucking shit, isn't she? It makes me feel like you missed me. Kissing my forehead to help me out of bed, making me rub the sleepy from my eyes. Are you asking me to come out and play? Are you trusting me to wash away a rainy day? I look above, the sky is blue, it's a secret, but I trust you too. Fucking Dr. Seuss shite this, isn't it? If it wasn't for you, I could sleep forever, but I'm not mad, I want breakfast. Is she rhymed breakfast with forever? Is that what's... Sayori, this is just a guess, but... Are you fucking thick? Did you wait until this morning to write this? No! Just a little bit. You can't answer just a little bit to a yes or no question. Sayori mildly bends over. I forgot to do it last night. Well, at least that makes me feel a little better about myself. Don't be mean! I still try my best. Uh, yeah. I didn't mean to say that it was a bad poem. It came out nice, or how should I put it? It sounds just like you. Simple. Really? Yeah. Especially that last line. I made eggs and toast! Even though you were late to school? It's mildly bends over. It's bad to skip breakfast. I get all cranky. Well, I guess there's no point in arguing. Anyway, thanks for showing me. Eh. This was so much fun. Monica's the best. Ah, yeah. But next time, I won't forget. And I'm going to write the best poem ever. Well, I guess I look forward to it. <coughs> Natsuki. Thank you. Very much. Who was that from? King Flush. Yeah, it's strange that a grown man is doing this. Even stranger is that 700 people are watching him. It is ridiculous. Uh, and Ben, Adam, you really have to keep playing this game, not to spoil it or anything, but it's a great game that mo goes much deeper than sexy times. Well, I'm going to keep going. I'm not. I mean, I'm enjoying myself so far. It's it's different, isn't it? It's not it's not quite Murdoch mania. Uh, pausing. Okay, well, let's just start with the things I don't like. First of all, um, Natsuki rereads my poem. Never mind, I don't feel like giving you my opinion. Eh? Well, then what's the point of sharing in the first place? I wrote this when I could have been doing other things. Ooh. In fact, remember how I said I wanted to read your poems? That's what I had in mind when writing this. I want to help you feel comfortable enough to share yours. Like Monica said. Ooh. Well, I would be more comfortable sharing my poem if yours was really bad. Oh, yes. You were supposed to show me some dumb poem and make me go, Ha! Well, it's not that great, but let me show you what real literature looks like. And you went and ruined it. I hope you're happy. So, in other words, you're saying you liked it? Urk! <laughs> Natsugi's retort gets caught in her throat. Ooh, you're so... You just... You just don't understand anything, do you? I already told you that. You don't have to go announcing it to the world like you're all self-important. Pretty sure you uh, never actually said that. I say that mostly to myself. Natsuki must really hate me or something. I can't figure out if it's a win or a loss that she liked my poem. In any case, you still need to show me yours, right? Ugh, fine, I guess. Only because Monica will make me if I don't. Eagles can fly. 
Monkeys can monkeys can climb, crickets can leap, horses can race, owls can see, cheetahs can run, eagles can fly, people can try, but that's about it. What? That's the, that is the worst one yet. Yeah, I told you that you weren't going to like it. I like it! What? Just be honest. I am. Why are you so convinced that I wouldn't like it? Well, because everyone in high school thinks that writing has to be all sophisticated and stuff. So people don't even take my writing seriously. But isn't the point of poems for people to express themselves? Your writing style wouldn't make your message any less valid. Yes, exactly. I like it when it's easy to read, but hits you hard. Like in this poem. Mm. Seeing everyone around you do great things can be really disheartening, so I decided to write about it. Yeah, I understand. But the other nice thing about simple writing is that it puts more weight on the wordplay. Like I set up for a rhyme at the end, then made it fall flat on purpose. It helps bring out the feeling in the last line. So you did. I guess more went into it than I realised. That's what it means to be a pro. Look at her stupid face, I hate it. I'm glad you learned something. Didn't expect that from the youngest one here, did ya? Yeah, guess not. I decided to humour her with that last comment. I don't really care how old everyone is, but if Natsuki's feeling proud, then I won't take that away from her. Phew, I guess that's everyone. I glance around the room. That was a little more stressful than I anticipated. It's as if everyone is judging me for my mediocre writing abilities. Hey, a lot of people said they liked it. Uh, even if they're just being nice, there's no way that my poems can stand up to theirs. This is a literature club, after all. I sigh. I guess that's what I ended up getting myself into. Across the room, Sayori and Monica are happily chatting. My eyes land on Yuri and Natsuki. Well, one of them, anyway. They gingerly exchange sheets of paper, sharing their respective poems. As they read it in tandem, I watch each of their expressions change. Natsuki's eyebrows furrow in frustration. Meanwhile, Yuri smiles sadly. What's with this language? Eh? Um, did you say something? Oh, it's nothing. Natsuki dismissively returns the poem to the desk with one hand. I guess you could say it's fancy. Ah, thanks. Yours is cute. Cute? Did you completely miss the symbolism or something? It's clearly about the feeling of giving up. How could that be cute? I, I know that. I just meant uh, the language, I guess. I was trying to say something nice. Eh? You mean you have to try that hard to come up with something nice to say? Thanks, but it really didn't come out nice at all. Um, well, I do have a couple of suggestions. <clears throat> if I was looking for suggestions, I would have asked someone who actually liked it. Which people did, by the way. Sayori liked it, and Adam did. Don't bring me into this, you fucking dick. So based on that, I'll gladly give you some suggestions of my own. First of all, fuck off. Excuse me? I appreciate the offer, but I've spent a long time establishing my writing style. I don't expect it to change anytime soon, unless, of course, I come across something particularly inspiring. Which I haven't yet. Mm. And Adam liked my poem too, you know. He even told me he was impressed by it. Natsuki suddenly stands up. Oh? I didn't realise you were so invested in trying to impress our new member, Yuri. Eh? eh? That's not why I... Uh, you're just... Yuri stands up as well. Here we go, it's fucking, this is a face-off. See you at WrestleMania, bitch. Maybe you're just jealous that Adam appreciates my advice more than he appreciated yours. Huh? And how do you know he didn't appreciate my advice more? Are you that full of yourself? I... No! If I was full of myself, I would deliberately go out of my way to make everything I do overly cutesy. Uh, uh, is everyone okay? Well, you know what? I wasn't the one whose boobs magically grew a size bigger as soon as Adam started showing up. Natsuki! Um, Natsuki, that's a little... This doesn't involve you. I don't like fighting, guys. Suddenly, both girls turn towards me, as if they just noticed I was standing there. Adam! She, she's just trying to make me look bad. That's not true. She started it. If she could get over herself and learn to appreciate that simple writing is more effective, then this wouldn't have happened in the first place. What's the point of making your poems all convoluted for no reason? The meaning should jump out at the reader, not force them to have to figure it out. Help me explain that to her, Adam. W wait, there's a reason we have so many deep and expressive words in our language. It's the only way to convey complex feelings and meanings the most effectively. Avoiding them is not only unnecessarily limiting yourself, it's also a waste. <clears throat> you understand that, right, Adam? Um, well... How did I get dragged into this in the first place? 
It's not like I know anything about writing, but whoever I agree with, they'll probably think more highly of me. <laughs> Natsuki, easy choice. Natsuki, you're right that I liked your poem. See? Wait. That's not an excuse for you to be so mean. You shouldn't pick a fight just because somebody else's opinion is different. That's not what happened at all. Yuri wouldn't even take my poem seriously. Hmm. I understand. Yuri. Eh? You're a seriously talented writer. It's no secret that I was impressed. Well, that's... But here's the thing. No matter how simple or refined someone's writing style is, they're still putting feelings into it and it becomes something really personal. That's why Natsuki felt threatened when you said her poem was cute. I see. I didn't notice that I... I'm sorry. Ooh. But Natsuki, you took it way too far. Yuri means well, and if you just told her how you felt, then this wouldn't have happened in the first place. Are you kidding? That's exactly what I did. It was her that... Natsuki, I think that's enough. You both said some things that you didn't mean. Yuri apologised. Don't you think you should too? Mm -hmm. Natsuki clenches her fists. In the end, nobody has taken her side. She's trapped, at this point being defiant only because she can't handle the pressure. I end up even feeling bad for her. Uh, um, sometimes when I'm hurt, it helps to take a walk and clear my head. Sayori, she doesn't need to... You know what? I'm going to do that. It'll spare me from having to look at all your faces right now. Without warning, Natsuki snatches her own poem up from the desk and storms out. On her way out, she crumples up the poem with her hands and throws it in the trash. Oh, Natsuki! She really didn't need to do that. I look across the room. Yuri has her chin buried in her hands while she stares down at her desk. I gingerly approach her and sit in an adjacent chair. Hmm. Everything alright? I'm so embarrassed. I can't believe I acted like that. You probably hate me now. No, Yuri. How could anyone not have gotten frustrated after being treated like that? You handled it as well as anyone could. I don't think any less of you. Well, all right, I believe you. Thanks, Adam, you're too kind. I'm thankful to have you a part of this club now. Uh, it's nothing. Thank you for saving me. <laughs> this is awesome. Thank you very much, Donna. I'm glad that you're enjoying it as much as I am. Uh, one more thing. Um, that one thing that Natsuki said about, you know, I would never do anything so shameful. Prove it. So, eh? What thing did Natsuki say? Uh, um, well, never mind that. I'm gonna go and make some tea. Ugh, good idea. Make, uh, make more than enough, uh, make enough for more than one person, okay? Y yeah. Okay, everyone, it's just about time for us to leave. Thank fuck. How did you all feel about sharing poems? Sayori said it was a lot of fun. Well, I'd say it was worth it. Natsuki, it was alright. Well, mostly. Adam, how about you? Yeah, I'd say the same. It was a neat thing to talk about with everyone. Awesome. In that case, we'll do the same thing tomorrow. And maybe you learn something from your friends too. So your poems will turn out even better. I think to myself, I did learn a little bit more about the kind of poems everyone likes. With any luck, that means I can at least do a better job impressing those I want to impress. I nod to myself with newfound determination. Adam, ready to walk home? Sure, let's go. Uh, Sayori beams at me. It truly has been a while since Sayori and I have spent this much time together. I can't say I'm really not enjoying it, either. Sayori, about what happened earlier. Eh, what do you mean? You know, between Yuri and Natsuki. Does that kind of thing happen often? No, no, no. That's really the first time I've seen them fight like that. I promise they're both wonderful people. You don't... You don't hate them, do you? No, I don't hate them. I just wanted your opinion. That's all. I can see why they make good friends with you. Phew. You know, Adam, it's nice that I get to spend time with you in the club. But I think seeing you get along with everyone is what makes me the happiest. And I think that everyone really likes you, too. That's... <laughs> Every day is going to be so much fun. Huh. It looks like Sayori still hasn't caught on to the kind of situation I'm in. Sure, being friends with everyone is nice, but... Does it really need to stop there? 
Uh, well, I'll just have to see what the future holds, Sayori. I pat Sayori on the shoulder. I said that more to myself than to her, but it's easy to use Sayori as an internal monologue sometimes. Okay, yeah, let's do this. What are we doing? What are we doing? We're writing again. More of this. Is this the game? Um, horror. Yes, I'm looking to impress old purple head there, Yuri. Fester, she'll like that, yeah. Disaster. Yes, I'm fucking nailing this. Uh, what's she gonna like? Vivacious. Alone. Bollocks. Hurt. Mm. Passion. Fucking hell. Despise. Thank you. Contamination. Death. Oh shit. Okay, that's fine. Uh, wrath. Graveyard. Secretive. Massacre. Misery. Bollocks. She likes... So, Yuri likes creepy stuff, doesn't she? But not necessarily too... Uh, definitely not pink. Cage. Hopeless. Ah. Gothy words. Fireflies. Fucking hell. That one in the middle's getting now. Okay. I think I did pretty well there. Another day passes and it's time for the club meeting already. I'm just going to save this so I don't forget. I'd hate to lose my uh, progress. Um, yeah, any amount of lead and it treats like you wrote it entirely for her. Okay. I've gotten a little more comfortable here over the past couple of days. Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Hi, Adam. Yo, Sayori. Looks like you're in a good mood today. <laughs> I'm just still not used to you being in the club, that's all. I see. That's a pretty simple thing to get you in a good mood, but I guess it's always the simple things with you anyway. Speaking of which, I'm kind of hungry. Will you come with me to buy a snack? No thanks. <laughs> He's a dick, isn't he? Eh? That's not like you at all. I have my reasons. Hello. Why don't we take a look at your purse, Sayori? Fucking robber. Eh... Why is that all of a sudden? No reason, really. I just wanted to look at it. Uh, ah! Sayori nervously retrieves her coin purse. She fumbles with the latch and gets it open. Then she turns it upside down and lets it, its contents spill out onto the desk. Only two small coins fell out. <laughs> I knew it. I can see right through you, Sayori. She wanted me to fucking take her to pay for it. That's not fair. How did you even know? It's simple. If you had enough money in the first place, you would have brought a snack with you before coming to the club room. Uh, so either you're not hungry and want an excuse to take a walk, or you plan to conveniently forget that you spent all your money so that I would lend you some. But there's one more thing. You're always hungry! And so that only leaves the one option. What? I give up. Don't make me feel guilty. If you feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. Ha ha ha! Yuri suddenly giggles. That was a giggle. Yeah? I didn't notice that she was listening in. Her face is in her book, as always. Uh, ah! I wasn't listening or anything. It was just something in my book. Yuri! Tell Adam to let me borrow some money. That's... Uh, don't get me involved like that, Sayori. Besides, you should only buy what you can responsibly afford. And frankly, after pulling a mischievous little stunt like that, your suffering is fair enough retribution. Ah. Did I just... I didn't mean that. I got too absorbed in my own book. Ooh. <laughs> I really like when you speak your mind, Yuri. It doesn't happen much, but it's a fun side of you. That's... There's no way you could think that. You were right, though. I did something bad and now I have to accept the revolution. Retribution. That! Still, coming from you, Sayori... I guess there's a little devil inside of us all, isn't there? <laughs> Don't let her fool you. Sayori knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys that she was bringing me to the club before she even told me. But, but you wouldn't have come if it weren't for the cupcakes. So I had to trick Natsuki. No, so I had to trick Natsuki into making them. Come on, give me more credit than that, Sayori. <coughs> what? 
what was that? Did I just get slapped? Yeah! Out of nowhere, something smacks Sorio in the face and tumbles onto the desk. Ow! What was... Eh? A, a cookie? Sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Sayori glances around. Is... is this a miracle? It's because I paid my restitution. Retribution. Actually, that one almost worked. <laughs> I was just gonna... I was just gonna give it to you. But then I heard you blab about the cupcakes. It was totally worth seeing your reaction though. <laughs> Natsuki! That's so nice of you. I'm so happy. Sayori hugs the cookie. Jeez, just eat it. Sayori rapidly tears open the wrapper and takes a big bite. So good. Mmm. Sayori suddenly clasps her hands over her mouth. I bit my tongue. Eh. You're going through a lot over just one cookie. Natsuki takes a bite of her own cookie. Ah. Yours looks really good too, Natsuki. Can I try it? Jeez. Beggars can't be choosers. But yours is chocolate. Yeah, why do you think I gave you that one? Fine. Still, I'm really happy you shared this one with me. Ooh! Sayori gets out of her seat and goes behind Natsuki, then wraps her arms around her. Ah, oh, jeez. I get it, I get it. Cookie's still in hand. Natsuki reaches up to nudge Sayori off of her. Om! Sayori suddenly leans down and takes a bite out of Natsuki's cookie. Uh, hey! Did you seriously just do that? <laughs> Mouthful, Sayori trots away to safety. Yuri and I laugh as well. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes. Monica, can you tell Sayori? Eh? Natsuki glances around. Monica isn't in the club room. <sighs> Where's Monica anyway? Good question. Have any of you heard anything about her being late today? Not me. Yeah, I haven't either. Hmm, that's a bit unusual. <clears throat> I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. She probably just had something to do today. She's pretty popular, after all. Eh? You don't think she has a... Case of athlete's foot? <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. She's probably more desirable than all of us can buy. What are you talking about, Yuri? Don't put yourself down. That's... That's not fair. Oh, that's true. Excuse me? Suddenly the door swings open. Sorry, I'm super, super sorry. Ah, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Eh? Monica chose the club over her boyfriend after all. You're so strong-willed. Boyfriend? What on earth are you talking about? Monica quizzically glances at me. Ah, never mind that. What held you up anyway? Ah, well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. <laughs> That makes no sense, though. You would have heard the bell ring, at least. I must not have heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't aware you played music as well, Monica. Ah, I don't really. I kind of just got started recently. I've always wanted to learn piano. That is so cool. You should play something for us, Monica. That's... Uh, Monica looks at me. Maybe once I get a little bit better, I will. Yay! That sounds cool. I'd also look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Adam. Monica bends over, smiling sweetly. Ah, I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. <laughs> Don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently. And I'd really love the chance to share once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck. Thanks. So I didn't miss anything, did I? No, not really. I choose to leave Sayori's mischievous, uh, choose to leave out, sorry, Sayori's mischievous escapade. I'm sure Natsuki will end up complaining to her anyway. It looks like everyone has already settled down. Sayori somehow has already finished her entire cookie. Yuri is back to her book, and Natsuki disappeared into the closet. I'm really curious to talk to Yuri a bit more, but at the same time, I would feel bad for distancing her, distracting her, sorry, from reading. I catch, I catch a glimpse of the cover of her book. It looks like the same book she lent to me. More than that, she seems to be on the first few pages. Ah, crap. I think she noticed me looking at her. She sneaks another glance at me and our eyes meet for a split second. But that only makes her hide her face deeper in her book. Sorry, I was just spacing out. I mutter this, sensing I made her uncomfortable. Oh, it's fine. I, I was just focused, then I probably... Uh, if I was focused, then I probably wouldn't have noticed in the first place. But I'm just rereading a bit of this, so... 
that's the book you gave me, right? Mm-hmm. I wanted to reread some of it. Not for any particular reason, just curious. How come you have two copies of the same book? Ah, uh, well, when I stopped at the bookstore yesterday, uh, that's, <laughs> that's not what I mean. I mean, I just happened to buy two of them. Ah, huh. I see. Thank you very much, giggles. There's something fairly obvious here that Yuri isn't telling me, but I decided to let it go. I'll definitely start reading it soon. I'm glad to hear. Once it starts to pick up, you might have a hard time putting it down. It's a very engaging and relatable story. Is that so? What's it about, anyway? Well, uh, Yuri closes the book and scans her eyes over the back. The book is titled Portrait of Markov. There's an ominous looking eye symbol on the front cover. Alright, uh, I just wanted to make sure I don't accidentally give anything away. Basically, it's about this girl in high school who moves in with her long lost younger sister. But as soon as she does so, her life gets really strange. She starts getting targeted by these people who escaped from a human experiment prison. And while her life is in danger, she needs to desperately choose who to trust. No matter what she does, she ends up destroying most of her relationships and her life starts to fall apart. That's kind of... it's kind of dark, isn't it? Yuri made it sound like it was going to be a nice story, so that dark turn came out of nowhere. <laughs> Yuri gently giggles. All of a sudden. Uh, are you not a fan of that sort of thing, Adam? Uh, no, it's not that. I mean, I can definitely enjoy those kinds of stories, so don't worry. I hope so. Yeah, I totally forgot that Yuri is into those things. She's so shy and reclusive on the outside, but her mind seems to be completely different. It's just that those kinds of stories, they challenge you to look at life from a strange new perspective. When horrible things happen not just because somebody wants to be evil, but because they have their own goals or their own philosophy that they believe in. Then suddenly, when you thought you, uh, you related to the protagonist, they're made out to be the naive one for letting their one-sided morals interfere with the villain's plans. I'm, I'm rambling, aren't I? Not again. Uh, I'm sorry. Hey, don't apologise. I haven't lost interest or anything. Well, I guess it's alright then. But I feel like I should let you know that I have this problem. When I let things like books and writing fill my thoughts, I kind of forget to pay attention to other people. So I'm sorry if I end up saying something strange. And please stop me if I start talking too much. That's... I really don't think you need to worry. That just means you're passionate about reading. The least I can do is listen. It's literature. Uh, it's a literature club. It's a lit club, after all. It's a lit club. Ah, that's, well, that's true. In fact, I might as well get started reading it, right? You don't have to. <laughs> what are you saying? Just a moment ago, you were saying you were looking forward to it. Uh, let me just get the book. I quickly retrieve the book that I put into my bag. All right, it's fine if I sit here, right? I slip into the seat next to Yuri's. Ah, <sighs> yeah. Are you sure? You seem a little apprehensive. Uh, that's... I'm sorry. It's not I don't want you to, it's just something I'm not very used to. That is reading in company with someone. I see. Well, just tell me if I end up distracting you or anything. Alright. I open the book and start the prologue. I soon understand what Yuri means about reading in company. It's as if I can feel her presence over my shoulder as I read. It's not a particularly bad thing, maybe a little distracting, but the feeling is somewhat comforting. Yuri is in the corner of my eye. I realise that she's not actually looking at her own book. I glance over. It looks like she's reading from my book instead. Sorry. I was just... Yuri, you really apologise a lot, don't you? I, I... I do? I don't really mean to. Sorry. I mean... <laughs> Yuri, you've done it again! Here, this should work, right? I slide my desk up until it's against Yuri's. Then hold my book more between the two of them. Ah, I suppose so. Yuri timidly closes her own copy. Once we lean in a little bit, our shoulders are almost touching. It feels like my left arm is in the way, so instead I use my right hand to hold the book open. Ah, I guess that makes it kind of difficult to turn the page. Keith, thank you very, very much. Uh, Cultolic is the cream of the crop. Keep up the good great work sorry it's a keith randomly in the middle of the sentence here it's keep up the keith work it says keep up the keith work keith thank you very very much and thank you to deluxe man for the bits falafel rule once again back to 
Yuri takes her left arm and holds the left side of the book between her thumb and forefinger. Ah. I do the same with my right arm on the right side of the book. That way, I turn a page and Yuri slides it under her thumb after it flips to her side. But in holding it like this, we're huddled even closer together than before. It's actually kind of distracting me. It's as if I can feel the warmth of Yuri's face and she's in the corner of my vision. Are you ready? I said, are you ready? Huh? To turn the page. Oh, sorry. I think I got a bit distracted for a second. I glance over at Yuri's face again and our eyes meet. I don't know how I'll be able to keep up with her. Ah, that's okay. You're not as used to reading, right? I don't mind being patient if it takes you a little bit longer. It's probably the least I can do, since you've been so patient with me. Yeah, thanks. We continue reading. Yuri no longer asks me if I'm ready to turn the page. Instead, I just assume that she finishes the page before me, so I turn it by my own violation. Volition, sorry. Uh, we continue the first chapter in silence. Even so, turning each page almost feels like an intimate exchange. My thumb gently letting go of the page, letting it flutter over to her side as she catches it under her own thumb. Hey, Yuri, this might be a silly thought, but the main character kind of reminds me of you a little bit. You, you think so? How does she? Well, I guess she's more blunt in a lot of ways, but she also second guesses all of the things that she says and does. Like, she's afraid she'll do something wrong. It's not like I can see into your head or anything, but they're kind of reminiscent of some of your mannerisms. I... I see. Yuri remains silent for a moment. But Adam, that's probably a terrible thing to have in common with her. Ugh, that's so embarrassing that you think that. Wait! I didn't mean it in a bad way or anything. Sorry, I, I really didn't know you were self-conscious about that sort of thing. I guess I more meant it as... It's kind of cute. Uh, ha! What are you saying all of a sudden? I... Okay, everyone! F fuck. So, I think it's about time we share today's poems with each other. We might not have enough time if we wait too long. Ah. Yuri exhales, spared from finishing her thought. Is that alright, Yuri? You look kind of down. I'm sorry if you haven't been looking forward to this. Ah, uh, it's not... It is fine. Yuri releases her hand from the book, causing it to close on top of my thumb. Fucking cocklock, right? Uh, alright. I guess I'll do some more reading tonight. Or would you prefer it if I only read with you? Um, I guess I don't have too much of a preference either way. Hmm. In that case, I'll read a little more tonight. It'll be more fun to read with you after it picks up a bit, you know? That's good reasoning. In that case, feel free to finish the first two chapters in your own time. Alright. I stand up. I make a mental note of where I left off in the book and then slip it back into my bag. Oh, for fucks. I don't, I'm not keen on this bit. Right. I'm tempted to have a, a little break just for a couple of minutes before we get to the poem reading thing. Because I've been reading for about an hour and a half now. And then we'll, uh, then we'll come back to it. So I'll just, uh, just take two, two or three minutes. Viewer retention is great right now. Well, that's wonderful. Well, I'm, I'm glad you guys are enjoying it. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna run to the toilet. I'm gonna have a quick Jimmy piss, and then I'll be back. And I'm gonna trigger an ad. I'll be back in 180 seconds. Where's the thing? I don't even know how to do this, to be honest. There's more hassle than it's worth. Is it there? Stream manager. Uh, run, ad break. Run, 150 second ad break. There you go, guys. See you in a minute. Quick wank break. Can you hear that? I don't know.
I don't know how long I've got left on the uh, on the ad thing. Oh, I think it's done. Yeah, I think uh, I think that's been one minute fifty seconds. Back from his wank. Uh, yeah, it was it was just a quick one. It's all that all that Yuri interaction it's got me going. Understandably, no ads. People are saying. I think you. So some people get them. Some people don't. I don't really know. Did I wash my hands? I did. They they smell like blue Carex. Um, okay, I guess we'll get back into it. Can we buy your sunk? What does that mean? Adam, I've got some good news to tell you. Hit me up, Archesby Cray. What's up? Hey Hexagon, thank you very, very much. Who should I po show my poem to first? Oh, that's, <laughs> no, never mind, sorry. That, I thought that was a message that you left with your thing. That's just part of the dialogue. Uh, Archie's B. Crane, my uni course is being reopened and moved to an online module, so I can finish this year. Well, that is, that's fantastic news. I'm really, really glad to hear that for you, mate. That is wonderful. Aaron Lee, piss flaps. Um, what's going down here? Uh, Trey Willier, Lit Club. Thank you very much. Cheers for your donations, guys. If you're just tuning in, remember, you can get, uh, if you've got Amazon Prime, you can subscribe to us on Twitch for free. Gives us a couple of quid, helps us out, doesn't cost you a penny, etc., etc., etc. Adam, Twitch rule number one mute your mic if you're going to take a piss, shit, or have a wank break. I did a piss. I don't think you could hear it. It was through two doors. But if you heard some. Some some water hitting what sounded like a a bowl full of water. It wasn't a bowl full of water. It was a toilet, and it was piss because I was doing a piss and then washing my hands. But there you go. Good to uh, heard a light drizzle. <laughs> heard the whistling. Yeah, I, I, I don't. I, I'm not too worried if you hear me whistling or wandering around or singing to myself. Um, Changa, thanks for hosting. Uh, so yeah. You've got nearly double the viewers of Xavier Woods, right? <laughs> that makes me a bit sad. Oh, maybe we'll raid him after I'm done with this. I don't know how long I'm going to be going. I'm enjoying myself at the moment, but I am one hour and a one hour thirty-seven minutes in, and I've just been—it's—it's it's quite quite tiring just reading all of this and then going <laughs> and stuff. That was weird. Gassing. Sorry. Right, we'll get back into it anyway. Who should I show my poem, poem to first? Natsuki. Hmm. I like your last one better. Huh. Really? Well, yeah, I can tell you're a lot more daring with this one. But you're really not good enough for that yet. It fell flat. That may be true, but I just wanted to try something different. I'm still figuring this all out. I mean, I always like poems that aren't trying too hard. I hate when people try to sound fancy or add more meaning by using annoying and complicated language. Just make it simple, cute, and to the point. Yuri's head over heels for all this cryptic nonsense, but I see right through that BS. Ha! <laughs> Making your reader look so hard for all this deep meaning is just an excuse to have no meaning at all. I guess that's one way to look at it. Well, everyone has their own opinion. I'm like arseholes. Uh, but my opinion is the best opinion. I'm sure you figured that out already. Uh, anyway, here's my poem. Maybe you'll learn something. Amy likes spiders. You know what I heard about Amy? She Amy likes spiders. Ickly, wriggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favourite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. One time, I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helps me up and took me to the nurse. I tried not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. 
Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends start to like spiders too? That's why I'm not friends with her. It doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if she doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The world is better off without spider lovers. And I'm going to tell everyone. Not bad, right? Uh, it's quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Yesterday's was way too short. I was just warming up. I hope you didn't think that was the best I could do. No, of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. I don't have to explain it. Sometimes you can explain complicated issues with much simpler analogies. And if it helps, and it helps people realise how stupid they're being. Like anyone would agree that the subject of this poem is an ignorant jerk. Do you know people like that? Of course, it's about how everyone thinks my... That doesn't matter. It can be about anything. And I wrote it to be easy to relate to. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or guilty pleasure. Something that you're afraid if people find out, they'd make fun of you or think less of you for. But that just makes people stupid. Who cares what someone likes as long as they're not hurting anyone and it makes them happy. Wrestling! I think people really need to learn to respect others for liking weird things. Well, you're definitely right. At least I can relate to that. And I'm sure a lot of other people can too. It's what I do best, after all. I don't like writing unless there's a good message to take away from it. Like, conveying emotions is important. But I want to make people think, not just feel. Remember that. I'm going to write a good one for tomorrow, too. So, uh, look forward to it. Cool, fascinating stuff. Sayori, I'll get to Yuri last. Bit of a treat. <laughs> oh! I like this one, Adam. It has some nice feelings in it. Ah, I'm glad. Does that mean it's better than yesterday's? Hmm, let me think. I don't know! I guess I like them both! <laughs> that's not very helpful, you know? Well, I'm not very good at figuring out if poems are good or bad, but that's why I just go by my heart. If it makes me feel things, then it must be a good poem. I'm not sure that's exactly how it works. Then again, I guess conveying feelings is pretty important, a uh, pretty important part of this whole thing. Yeah, maybe. Honestly, I don't even know what kind of writing you like in the first place. Yeah! Me neither. Ugh. Why don't you at least try giving it some thought? Ah, oh, you want to write something for me? That's so sweet! Yeah, right. But you're always thinking about other people. You need to think about yourself once in a while. If you don't, you might end up getting hurt at some point. Huh? Well, I don't really know what you mean, but I'll try to keep it in mind. Well, whatever. Anyway, let's see. Hmm. I guess I would like happy poems. Wait, sometimes I like sad poems too. Sometimes a little bit of both. There's a word for that, right? What's the word I'm looking for? Bittersweet. Yeah. I like things that are happy and things that are sad. Happy and sad? I can't see you liking something sad, Sayori. Well, I like happy the most, but sometimes when you have a little rain cloud in your head, a sad poem can give the, can give the rain cloud a little hug and make a nice happy rainbow. Sayori, that's unexpectedly poetic. Eh? It is? Maybe I'm getting better at expressing my feelings after all. Thanks, Adam. I should go write that down then. You can read my poem now, okay? Bottles. I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. It's the secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine, all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly. But there's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe. And I put the bottle on the shelf with all the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts in bottles, all in a row. My collection makes me lots of friends, each bottle a starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friend feels a certain way, down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles, deeper and deeper my fingers go. Like exploring a dark cave, discovering the secrets hiding in the nooks and crannies. Digging and digging, scraping and scraping. I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time's elapse. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally, all done, and I opened up, and in come my friends. In they come, in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I frantically pull them from the shelves, uh, the shelf one after the other, holding them out to each and every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts. Thoughts and shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends. My friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading, something. But all I hear is echo, 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 echo. 
inside my head. Ooh. Pretty deep. Holy crap! Sayori, did you really write this? Of course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was going to write the best poem ever? Yeah, but... I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot, and I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm so used to being so cheerful? Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is, it came out good. You should be proud of it. Oh, thanks. I feel like... I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic. You've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah! Writing's the best! <laughs> I'm gonna keep writing until I die. I snort it there, sorry. Haha! <laughs> don't let... Uh, don't get ahead of yourself. Sayori's always had a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it, no more than a week later. I wonder if this is one of those times. But seeing the passion in her eyes makes me... makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. Uh, Monica. Hi again, Adam. How's the writing going? Alright, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad. I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. <laughs> I wouldn't count on that. You never know. Want to share what you wrote for today? Sure, here you go. I give my poem to Monica. Alright! Great job, Adam. I was going all in my head while reading it. It's really metaphorical. I'm not sure why, but I didn't expect you to go for something so deep. I guess I underestimated you. It's easiest for me to keep everyone's expectations low. That way, it always counts when I put in some effort. Monica bends over. Ha <laughs> ha! That's not very fair. Well, I guess it works anyway. You know that Yuri likes this kind of writing, right? Fucking yes, have it. Writing that's full of imagery and symbolism. Unlike Sayori, who uses simple and direct words to describe happiness and sadness, Yuri likes it when readers are left to derive their own meaning out of it. It's very challenging to write like that effectively, both allowing people to get something out of it just by feel or letting them deeply analyse uh, analyze, sorry, all of the nuances. It can take years of practice, which I'm assuming Yuri has at this point. I never really asked though. I'm sure I'm nowhere near her at her level yet. Don't worry so much about that. You do your own thing. Just keep exploring and learn by trying new things. But anyway, you want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. Alright, let's take a look. In fact, fuck, it's short. Or is it? Yeah. Mm -mm. Save me. The colours, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colours. Flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, blue. Uh, an endless cacophony of meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop. Violent, grating waveforms. Squeaking, screeching, piercing. Uh, sine, cosine, tangent. Like playing a chalkboard on a turntable. Like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust. An endless poem of meaningless lonely. Lonely? Okay. Hmm. It's even more abstract than your last one. Monica bends over. Ha <laughs> ha! I guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. No, I never said that. It's just a kind of thing I've never really seen before, I guess. I kind of like playing with my space on the paper. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of a poem. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote the lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's still hard for me to tell what it's about, though. <laughs> Sometimes asking what a poem about isn't the right question. A poem can be as abstract as physical expression or a feeling, or a conversation within the reader. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway. Here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. You never know when you might change your mind, or whenever, whenever something, uh, or when something unexpected may happen. Wait, is this tip even about writing? What am I even talking about? <laughs> That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Great stuff. Here we go. Let's see what you've written for today. Yuri stares at the poem with a surprised expression on her face. Do you like it? Adam, how did you pick up on this so quickly? Just yesterday I was telling you the kind of techniques worth practicing. Maybe that's why. You did a good job explaining. 
I really wanted to try giving it more imagery. Yuri visibly swallows. Even her hands appear sweaty. I'm not used to this. Used to what? I don't know. It's fine, take your time. Yuri breathes and collects her thoughts. I know that Yuri likes to think before she speaks, so I offer that patience to her. Yeah, just being appreciated like this, I guess. It probably sounds really stupid, but seeing someone motivated by my writing, it just makes me really happy. Are you saying you've never shared your writing before? Yuri nods. Really, I don't believe it. I really only write for myself. And besides, people would just laugh at me. Do you really think that? Again, Yuri nods. Huh? Even your close friends? Yuri doesn't respond to that. I wonder why. Anyway, do you want to share the poem you wrote today? Yeah, I do. If it's with you. The Raccoon. It happened in the dead of the night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the scuttering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as an... I can't read that. Unordinary, does that say? Unordinary human. Uh, I gave the raccoon a piece of bread, my subconscious well aware of the consequences, well aware that a raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom. The bread, my hungry curiosity, the raccoon, an urge. The moon in increments. The moon increments its phase. I'm struggling with the fucking hand right now. Uh, its phase uh, and reflects that much more light off of my cutting knife. I'm gonna have to fucking dump her if she keeps writing like this. Just use fucking Times New Roman, you bitch. The very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread, fresh and soft. The raccoon becomes excited. Get the raccoon excited! Or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions onto the newly satisfied animal. The raccoon has taken to following me. You could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me its excitement. Get the raccoon excited! A rush of blood. Classic, I can't, Pavlovian conditioning. I slice the bread and I feed myself again. Um, I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. I can see that. It's a lot more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't begin to imagine what this poem is about. That's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style. Using the poem as a canvas to express vivid imagery and conveying emotions through them. Yeah, if I take it at face value, then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well, I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I wanted to express the way it feels for me and to indulge in more in my more usual hobbies. Unusual hobbies. It's those sorts of things I'm usually forced to keep to myself. So I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Huh, that's funny. Didn't Natsuki also write something about that? About someone being ridiculed for a strange interest? Eh? She... she did? Yeah. She was talking about how it doesn't matter what you're into as long as you're not hurting anybody. She... she's right. I mean... Does she really feel that way? Yeah. Sounds like you two have that in common. That's... Well, well, that's interesting. To me, she seemed like the kind of person who would make fun of my hobbies. But I suppose that's my fault for judging, isn't it? Uh, please don't tell her I said that. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Don't worry, I have no reason to. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing it with me. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I'd probably hate myself. I, I might be ranting a little bit now, but I'm glad that you're a good listener. Okay, everyone, we're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned today, so if everyone could come and sit at the front of the room. Ooh. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Oh, do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. Thanks for clipping that, by the way, Senor Sarcasm23. What do your neighbours think about all this maniacal laughter every three minutes? Well, they haven't popped round yet. I've got away with this so far. And I've been streaming pretty fucking late as well. Um, but they, they can hear. I know, they can definitely hear. Because I was, I was upstairs uh, 
earlier, and some bloke was uh, singing, not loudly. I could hear every word. I don't really do well with last minute preparations. They're probably watching, aren't they? It's like 700 people or something here. I can't see how many are remaining. Probably about four by now, but... Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? We won't need much more than a few decorations. Sayori has been working on posters, and I've designed some pamphlets that we can give out during the event. Okay, that's great and all, but that doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing for the event. Ah, sorry, I thought you heard about it already. We're going to be performing. Performing? <coughs> um, Monica? Yeah, we're going to be having a poetry performance. Each of us are going to choose a poem to recite during the event. But the cool part is, we're also going to let anyone else come up and recite poems too. Sayori's putting all, uh, it all on the posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. <laughs> Sayori, who's been colouring a poster, holds it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't, you didn't already start putting these posters up, did you? Uh, well, I did. Do you really think it's that bad of an idea? Well, no, it's not a bad idea, but I didn't sign up for this, you know? There's no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. I, I agree with Natsuki. I can never in my life do something like that. Imagining it, Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys, no Sayori, I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Nat Natsuki and Yuri have never shared their poems with anyone until just a couple of days ago. It's a lot to ask for them to recite their poems out loud to a room full of people. I guess I kind of overlooked that, so I'm sorry. But I still think we should give it our best. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. If we start the event and each put on a good performance, then it will inspire others to do the same. And the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone what literature is all about. Yeah! It's all about expressing your feelings, being intimate with yourself, finding new horizons, and having fun. That's right. And it's those reasons that we're all in this club today. Don't you want to share that with others? To inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place? I know you do. I know we all do. And if, it all, and if all it takes is standing in front of the room for two minutes and reciting a poem, then I know you can do it. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think the Sayori and Monica have been trying really hard to get new members. The least we can do is help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, but... It looks like Natsuki doesn't have any arguments left. Uh, okay, fine. I guess I'll just have to get it over with. All right. Phew. Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? Yuri dejectively glances around at everyone else's expecting faces. I guess, I guess I don't really have a choice. Ha <laughs> that's everyone. You're the best, Yuri. This club is seriously gonna be the death of me. Oh gosh, <laughs> you'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, let's move on to the main event. Main event time! Uh, I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice reciting them in front of each other. N no way! Monica! This is too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect to be able to do it in front of perfect strangers? Oh no. Don't worry. I'll start off to help everyone feel a little more comfortable. Can I go next? <laughs> yeah, of course. Now, let's see. Monica flips through her notebook to the specific poem she has in mind for herself. She then stands behind the podium. The title of this poem is The Way They Fly. Ahem. Monica begins reciting her poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line she recites, bringing the words to life. Is this something she's done before, or is she simply a natural? I glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Sayori looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finishes the recitation. Uh, the four of us applaud. Monica takes a breath and smiles. That, that was so good, Monica. <laughs> Thank you very much. I was just hoping to set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Sayori? I, I'll go next. What? Yuri's fired up all of a sudden. She's got a fucking comeback. Uh, oh, I missed that. Keeping her head down, she walks quickly over to the podium. This poem is called... Jeremy, thanks very much, mate. That's not the name of the poem, but cheers. Yuri anxiously glances at each of us. You can do it, Yuri. It's called... After Image of a Crimson Eye. 
Yuri's voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting so much effort in? As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happens when Yuri gets absorbed into her books. Her quivering words transform into the sharp syllables of a fierce and confident woman. The poem is full of twists and turns in its structure that she enunciates with perfect timing. This must be a rare glimpse into the whirling fire Yuri keeps concealed inside her head. Suddenly, she's finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back into reality and glances around her as if she's bewildered even herself. I... It's up to me to save this situation. I'm the first to start applauding. Everyone joins me afterward and we give Yuri the recognition that she deserves. And if you could join me in clapping along at home. Well done, Yuri. You're really hot. It's not that we didn't want to applaud for her, but we were caught so off guard that we must have forgotten. As we applaud, Yuri holds the poem to her chest and rushes back into her seat. Yuri was really that good. Thank you for sharing. Looks like it. Looks like Yuri is down for the count. Okay, I guess I'm next then. Sayori hops out of her chair and cheerfully walks to the podium. This one's called My Meadow. Ah, ah. Sorry, I giggled. Eh. <laughs> Sayori, it's a lot harder than I thought. How did you guys do it so easily? Ah. Try not to think of it like you're reciting to other people. Imagine you're reciting it to yourself, like in front of a mirror or in your own head. It's your poem, so it'll come out the best that way. I see, I see. Okay then, Sayori begins her poem. Somehow it feels like her soft voice was made as a perfect match. The poem isn't aimlessly cheery like Sayori is. It's serene and bittersweet. If I were to read this on paper, I probably wouldn't think that much of it. But hearing it come from Sayori's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Sayori meant when she said she liked my poems. It's like I get to reach more deeply into someone I thought I knew through and through. Sayori finishes and we applaud. I did it! Good job, Sayori! <laughs> even Adam liked it. I guess that's a good sign. What does that even mean? It came out nicely, Sayori. The atmosphere of the poem fits you really nicely. But it might be that other poems wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. Huh? I, I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poems of yours where that sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work as well. They might need a little more force behind them, depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean. That's well, I've been practicing that kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do it in front of everyone. <laughs> then next time, I'm gonna make you pick a poem that challenges you a little bit more. We don't have that much time before the festival, you know? Okay. Now, who's next? Natsuki? Hmm. <laughs> don't make me go before Adam. It's not like I can compare to you guys anyway. Might as well let Adam lower everyone's standards a little bit before I have to do you fucking cunt. Natsuki! It's fine. It's fine. I might as well get it over with. But it's not like I have much of a selection of what to read. I'll just have a go with what I wrote for today. I stand up and step in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. I recite my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I, replete, I receive applause anyway. Sorry, I'm not really as good as everyone else. Don't worry about it so much. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your own writing. That's something that'll improve over time though. Yeah, maybe. All right then, that just leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah. I'm going. Natsuki begrudgingly gets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. The poem is called... It's called... Why are you all looking at me? Because you're presenting. <laughs> anyway, the poem is called Jump. Natsuki takes a breath. Once she starts reciting her poem, her sour attitude disappears for a little. While she's still a little unenthused, her poem has a rhythm and rhyme to it. It's Natsuki's trademark style, and it works surprisingly well when spoken aloud. The words feel like they bounce up and down, as if giving life to the poem. Natsuki finishes, and everyone applauds. She huffs back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You'd better not make me do that again. Ah, well. Do you at least feel prepared enough to recite a poem in front of other people? I mean, doing it in front of other people will be way easier. I can put on whatever face I want for other people. But when it's just my friends, it's just embarrassing. That's a surprise, Natsuki. I think I, I think it would be the other way around for me. Well, that's just how it is, so... <clears throat> well, I guess in that case, you won't have much to worry about for the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming through. It might be hard, but I hope that you all have an idea of what it's like now. Make sure you pick a poem and get enough practice before the festival, okay? Okay. 
I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time what you'll be reciting. Jeez. I should probably find some other poem to recite instead. That's fine too. It doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pleasantly surprised that you're putting in all this effort for the club. Monica bends over. It makes me really happy. Ah, yeah, no problem. Okay, everyone, I think that's about it for today. I know the festival's coming up, but let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. It's been working out really nicely so far, so I'd like to continue that. As for the festival, we'll finish planning tomorrow and then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday is the big day. I can't wait. I can do this. I can do this. All right. I stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Sayori and Monica, but I'll do my best to get through it. It's... If it's for the sake of the club, and impressing Monica. But Monica, I don't give a fuck about Monica. I, I want fucking Yuri. Uh, then I'll have to do my best. Ready to go, Sayori? Yep. Look at you two always going home together like that. Monica bends over. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? And it, 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 Jeez, guys. Don't make such a big deal out of it. It must be a little nice, though. Well, how am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay, Adam. You don't have to say it. Whatever. Let's go already. I love you, Yuri. I walk home with Sayori once more. Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already changed. But today, Sayori is being a little quieter than usual on the way home. Hey, Sayori. Sorry, I was spacing out. Ugh, no wonder. Um, I was thinking about something from earlier. I like how we get to... I mean... I, uh, Sayori fumbles with her words. So, let's just say that one day, Yuri asked to walk home with you. Huh? What would you do? What kind of question is that? You kind of put me on the spot here. <laughs> well. Pretty fucking obvious that one, isn't it? Walking home with Yuri, huh? Why does the thought of that make my heart pound? And my cock throb? Uh, I mean, given how hard it is for her to socialise, I'd feel awful turning her down. So, isn't she so beautiful and smart? That has nothing to do with what I just said. Ha ha ha, you admitted it! Jeez. There's not even any point in speculating something that's never going to... Sorry, that was a bit much, I know. <laughs> well, maybe. But I just like to think about it. It's not long before you won't need me anymore, you know? Need you? Sayori. I can't figure out how you're seeing things in your head right now. Sorry. Everyone is different. Nobody in the club is a replacement for you. Hmm. If you say so, the conversation trails off and I'm left feeling awkward. But it was kind of her fault for trapping me with such a weird question. I can't just lie to her, but if there's something that makes her happy, I'd hate to take that away from her. That's why I said there's no point in speculating. Then again, the festival is only a few days away. Who knows what will happen in that time. I'm going to wear some slippers on because my feet are getting a little bit cold. I'll do this first quickly because I'm getting alright at this, I think. Uh, I think she liked boop, didn't she? Fuck. Broken. Bollocks! She didn't like blanket. I don't think she liked it. Well, right, cheers for that, Austin, you fucking wanker. <laughs> Bed. Oh! Horror. She definitely liked that. Cage she liked. Anxiety. I think she did like lust. Judgment. Judgment. Yes. Tragedy. Oh, bollocks. Massacre. Parfait. No. Graveyard. Feather? I'm fucking this up here, aren't I? Extreme. Melancholy. Do you like fireworks? No. Dark. Ah, oh, what? Vesta. Uh, I'm restrained here. Climax. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to whack some slippers on because my feet are getting a little bit cold. I'm getting quite into this. I don't think I can play it for too much longer, unfortunately, because my, my voice is going to start going, and I've got to record voiceovers tomorrow. 
Um, I'll be right back. I'm just going to find some slippers. Couple of socks instead. Oh. He's wanking, walking around, making it look like he's busy. Are they odd socks? I can show you my socks if you want. Um. One there that has pineapples on. I'll apply that to my foot now in a pulling motion. Um, and the other one is itchy and scratchy. There you are. You really want Yuri, don't you, Adam? I mean, I may as well try and invest in the game as much as I can. Games are more fun when they when they're goals. <clears throat> this is like the most that I've I've never really watched any um anime or anything. I think I, I've seen Howl's Moving Castle um and I've seen Spirited Away and Pokemon. Apart from that, I don't really think I've seen that much. I'm gonna give it a. That's apparently bannable on here. What's showing my feet? If my feet actually accidentally get shot, I'm gonna get banned. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna do one more uh, literature club, and then I'm gonna call it a night because I, I can't. I'm getting quite tired, to be honest. I had a long day, and I was up half the night yesterday, and then I was up early to do news and graded this morning. But I think I'll probably, um, showing bare feet as terms of service, that's fucking nuts, isn't it? I, I guess if people are doing it to encourage donations, I, I get that. That's... Um, yeah, I'll, I'll continue streaming this tomorrow. Are you guys enjoying it? Are you having fun? As long as you guys are having fun, that's, that's all good with me. And thank you very much for your, uh, your bits and all that shit. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, good. Okay, yeah, no, I'll do a poll. That's a good way of settling it. The time of my life, you cock throbber. Get the throbbing cock excited. Poll. Oh, have I fucked this up? How do I do it again? There you go. Uh, question. More fucking... Oh, I can't say fucking... Can I have more, more fucking... What's it called? More... I can't even remember what the name... Doko... Doki... Doki... Yes. No. There you go, I'll give you one minute. So I have a sip of beer and I will continue playing for one more literature club anyway, so we'll do one more round of poems and all that. What are we on? Goodness me. Okay, 92%. I, I, I'm flattered that you guys are into this because it's very much not about <laughs> wrestling. At all, so I appreciate it. How many people have we got watching? Uh, where do I see this? I'm really shy to this fucking Twitch stuff on. That one. We have got 729, but I can't believe so many people have stuck around for this. More viewers than Xavier Woods as well. Nuts. 
So, the poll is very much, it's 90 percent yes 10 percent no so we'll be doing more tomorrow at the usual time which is 8 p.m gmt um but i'll do one more round of this first there are probably some people here for the game it's quite an old game though isn't it right i saw on the thing it was it was released a couple of years ago uh can you upload this on youtube on your own channel or something uh if we can download it yeah i don't mind doing that i if you DM me on Twitter or something and I'll send you an unlisted link because it's a fucking weird thing for me to put on my channel. And I won't, I'm not going to say I'm not proud of this content, but I did just make a joke about a throbbing cock as well. And You will be able to watch it video on demand on Twitch though. If you want to relive this fucking fantastic Two hours and 14 minutes. Uh, okay. Speaking of throbbing cocks. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, shit. What have I done there? Cult Twitch PC. Smash it. Oh, man. I'm the last one here again. Don't worry. I just walked in too. Were you practicing piano again? Yeah. <laughs> you must have a lot of determination. Starting this club and now picking up piano? Well, maybe not determination, but I guess passion. Remember that the club wouldn't be here if it wasn't for all of you. And I'm super happy that you're all willing to help out for the festival too. Ah, I can't wait for the festival, it's gonna be great! Huh? Weren't you complaining about it just yesterday, Natsuki? Well, yeah, I'm not talking about our part of the festival, but it's a whole day of school where we get to play and eat all kinds of delicious food. You sound a bit like Sayori all of a sudden. Monica, do they usually have fried squid? Thank you very much, King Flush. Raid Woods, please. Yeah, we'll do it at the end. We'll see what happens there. But be hey, don't be fucking mental like you were with uh, Ember Moon. Not you specifically, Flush. Um, because... People would, yeah, people would go and fucking show feet cultaholic and Adam Pacitti wants you to show feet and shit like that, which is doesn't reflect especially well on us. So be good. Promise to be good and I'll do it. Squid? That's a pretty specific thing to look forward to. Oh, come on. Are you saying that you don't like squid? You of all people? Ugh, I didn't say I don't like it. Thank you very much, Ross. A lot of people aren't watching this for the game. They're watching it for you. Keep up the streams and it disappeared. Uh, keep up the streams. Thank you very much. That's a, that's a really genuinely lovely compliment. And it's, it's I'm flattered that 700 people on a platform that we rarely use uh, until last week have, have popped along for this. Because I'm, I'm having a lot of fun doing it, as I say. Besides, what do you mean by you of all people? Because it's right in your name. Monica? Monica bends over. <sighs> That's not how you say my name at all. Also, that joke makes no sense in translation. <sighs> Never mind. Let's just focus on our own event for now, okay? Fine, fine. Your reactions aren't as much fun as Yuri's or Sayori's anyway. Excuse me? Where is Sayori anyway? Oh, there he is. Sayori is sitting at a desk in the corner of the room looking down at nothing. I walk over to her. Hey, Sayori. I wave my hand in front of her face. Eh? You're spacing out again. Uh, ah, <laughs> sorry. Don't mind me. You can go talk to everyone else. Huh? Is everything alright? Uh, of course. Why wouldn't it be? It just feels like you're a little off. Sorry for assuming things. Jeez, you worry too much about me. I'm fine, see? Sayori jumps up once and shows me a big smile. Don't let me distract you from having fun with everyone. Well, alright, if you say so. I worriedly glance at Sayori before, before turning back toward everyone else, but the conversation is already dis dispersed with everyone back at their usual activities. Maybe I should ask Monica if she's noticed anything about Sayori recently. Since they've been preparing for the festival, they must be spending a lot of time together. I timidly approach Monica, who is shuffling through some papers at her desk. Adam! What's up? Hey, this might sound a little strange, but have you noticed anything up with Sayori recently? Anything up with her? In what way do you mean? Maybe I'm reading a little too much into it, but she seems a bit downcast today. Oh, you think so? I can't say I've noticed anything about her. Monica peers across the room at Sayori, who is idly dragging a rubber eraser up and down her desk. Maybe there is something on her mind. But I'm surprised I'm not the one asking you, Adam. You certainly know her a lot better than I do. 
Yeah, but she's never really like this. She's always talked to me about things that bothered her, but this time when I asked her, she was really dismissive. Sorry, I know it's not your problem. I just wanted to ask you if you knew anything, so I'll drop it now. No, no, no. It's important to me too. I mean, I'm also friends with her, and I also care about the well-being of my club members, you know? Maybe I'll try talking to her myself. But are you sure about that? She seemed like she wanted to be left alone. Are you sure? Maybe she just has a hard time bringing it up with a person of interest. Person of interest? What do you mean by that? I'm saying that maybe the thing on her mind is you, Adam. Me? How on earth would you come to that conclusion? Well, I probably shouldn't say too much, but Sayori talks about you more than anything else you know. Huh? She's been so much happier since she joined the club. It's like an extra light was turned on inside of her. What? No way. Uh, Sayori is always like that. She's always been full of sunshine. It's not any different now to, than it always has been. Monica bends over. <laughs> You're so funny, Adam. Have you ever thought you... Have you thought that maybe you've always seen her as so cheerful because that's just how she is when she's around you? Ah, I said too much. I'm sorry, what do I know anyway? I didn't mean to jump to conclusions, so you should just forget about what I said. I'll try and talk to her, so why not think about uh, try not to think about it for now. Ah, all right. Monica smiles meaningfully. I know she said to forget about it, but I already know that I won't be able to get those words out of my... Monica stands up from her desk and walks across the room to where Sayori is sitting. I watch her kneel down next to Sayori and gently talk to her. But she's keeping her voice so quiet, I can't hear her from here. I sigh and sit myself down. I know Sayori told me not to worry about her and to have fun with everyone else, but that's impossible to do when she's behaving like this. Exactly how much do I care about her that I'm letting her, I'm letting this weigh me down so much? Now it feels like I'm the one behaving out of the ordinary, but there's nothing I can do beside wait for Monica. Why does it feel like I'm being watched? I glance around the room. Suddenly, I notice Yuri peering at me from over her book. But she looks away just as quickly with a flustered look on her face. I realise that she won't get uh, that she won't get anywhere like this. I've never really seen Yuri approach anyone or start a conversation on her own accord, so I have no choice but to approach her myself. By now it's a little easier for me to do that. I stand up from my desk and sit in one next to her own. I didn't mean to bother you or anything. Relax, you didn't even do anything. But I could tell that you wanted to be alone with your thoughts. Alone with my thoughts? How were you even able to tell that I was thinking like that? Well, it's something I do a lot. So it wasn't hard for me to spot based on your posture and expression. Not that I was staring or anything. I didn't do anything creepy like that. In any case, I guess you were right. I'm sorry if I caused you any concern. Don't apologise. Your troubles are the only concern, uh, only the concern of those who willingly share in that concern. Of course, there are certainly those that find the most comfort in keeping to themselves, but if you would prefer to share what's on your mind, then I'd be glad to listen. Oh, it's really not that big of a deal. I was just feeling a bit uneasy about Sayori. Sayori? Yeah, she seems a little off today, but when I asked her about it, she didn't want to admit it to me, so I can't help but wonder if something happened to her. Oh, that's quite romantic. Uh, sorry. I didn't mean to say something so stupid. It's not that, I just didn't want you to misunderstand. Sayori and I have always just been friends for a long time, that's all. Uh, I see. Then perhaps it is unusual for her to be dismissive to you about her feelings. Or maybe I'm just reading too much into it. Adam, the world is full of meaning, often hidden deep beneath plain sight. And there are many untold mysteries behind every person, no matter how well you may know them. Ah, so you think there might be something behind it after all? Hmm. I think that Sayori is a very complex person. Her mannerisms on the outside don't always match uh, what she may what may be going on inside her head, and she may not always know what she wants. I notice her strange behaviour today too, and I also feel some concern for her. But in your case, it looked like she was fully occupying your thoughts, wasn't she? Well, I, I guess that was the case. Sayori, she really means a lot to you, doesn't she? Fucking no, no, Yuri. I, I guess. But you don't need to put it that way. We're just good friends, that's all. Yuri suddenly looks deeply into my eyes. Her expression is gentle and curious, as if she was searching for something. Embarrassed, I avert my gaze. Sometimes a person's mysteries are untold, even to themselves. And you, as someone honest and caring, may uncover feelings you weren't aware were in you. Th that is, I think that she would be a very fortunate person 
to have you feel that way about her. Yuri, you're giving me too much credit. I'm a pretty simple guy, so I think I'm pretty good at understanding my own feelings. I'm not nearly as sophisticated as you are. Uh, uh, that's not a compliment, is it? It is what it is. Anyway, as long as we're here, why don't we do some reading? Well, as long as you're okay with it. Yeah! I should be taking my mind off this whole thing anyway. Why don't we go ahead and get started? Yes, let's. Actually, I have a request. Do you mind if I make some tea first? <laughs> Not at all. Thanks very much. If there's one thing that can take my, uh, make my reading time here any better, it's a nice cup of tea. Well, uh, not to mention for yourself as well. Yuri stands up and makes her way to the closet. I follow and watch as she retrieves a small water pitcher from the shelf, the kind with a filter inside. Can you hold this for a second? Sure. Yuri hands me the water pitcher and also fetches an electric kettle. I'm going to plug this in at the teacher's desk and then we'll go get some water. She walks past me and sets the kettle down on the teacher's desk. I simply watch her movements. To my surprise, the way she moves really contrasts her speaking mannerisms. Especially, especially because of her long legs, Yuri appears elegant and methodical. Like Randy Orton. Okay, may I have the water pitcher? Thanks, I'll be right back. Ah, I might as well walk with you. Walk with Yuri. Stop with the wrestling bullshit, Adam. Uh, yeah, why not? Shall we go then? Yeah. Hmm, where are you two off to? Eh? We just... Yuri was going to make some tea, so... I suddenly realise how weird it sounds to explain this to Monica. We're just filling the water pitcher. Ah, okay. Sorry, I was just a bit curious. Uh, that's the kind of... Uh, it's kind of a one-person job, isn't it? That's... Monica, please mind your own fucking business for once, you stupid cunt. Or do you want to tell me there's something wrong with helping involve Adam in the club? Uh, 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 my mouth gapes. Monica bends over. I... I suppose there's nothing wrong with that? Hmm. Then let's go, Adam. Ah. Yuri quickly exits the room and I follow. Ooh, here we go. Once in the hallway, she suddenly puts her forehead against the wall. I spoke without thinking. How could I say something like that? Yuri, I just... Something about the way she said that. It made me feel so irritated. What's wrong with me? No, Yuri, I think you did the right thing. I wasn't expecting it, but it's also not right for Monica to just judge people like that. Adam, how come even when I do something bad, you're being nice to me? Because nothing that you do is as bad as you make it seem in your head. Nobody's perfect. We have emotions and we can't always hide them away. But you always amplify things in your head. Your mind turns a light rain shower into a hurricane. Ah, no. no. Wouldn't you hate me? Hate, uh, wouldn't you hate me for something as terrible as that? Why would I hate you? I can't hate someone for having emotions. What kind of friend? Don't say friend, Adam. What kind of lover would do that? Lover, you say. <laughs> friend, you say. Uh, um, Yuri lifts her head. Adam, I really like being friends with you. <laughs> Thanks, Yuri. <laughs> I like being friends with you too. I feel kind of awkward saying something like that, but I'm doing my best to help Yuri feel better. Anyway, ah, uh, yeah. Shall we go? Yeah. Yuri and I walk to the nearest water fountain. Once we fill up the water pitcher, we return to the classroom. You fucked it, Adam. You fucked it, you stupid dick. Adam, do you like oolong tea? Oh, yeah, yeah, I fucking love it. Anything's fine. Very well. Yuri sets the temperature on the kettle to 200 degrees. Phew, fancy kettle. Uh, now it's time to get the teapot. You really do this properly, don't you? Of course. I shouldn't do any less when I'm making tea for others, even if I'm not an expert on tea or anything. <laughs> In that case, you'll only be even more impressed. Ah, perhaps I will. Yuri fetches the teapot, and I miss that. To my surprise, she even starts humming a little to herself. You must be in a good mood now. Is that so? I was letting it show, and you noticed. I was doing a bit of thinking, and I decided that I would try expressing myself a little bit more. It turns out it's not its not very hard for me to do when it's you who's around, anyway. Ah, that's great, Yuri. Just don't push yourself too much. You're always worrying about me, Adam. It's very endearing. That's... Yuri wasn't kidding. I don't even know if I can keep up with this. I watch Yuri pour a cup of tea each for us, Adam, I have another request. Do you mind if... Thank you very much, not number six. Do you mind if we sit on the floor today? Uh, why is that? It's a little bit easier on my back. 
I can read with my back against the wall rather than bending over at my desk. Ah, sorry, I didn't realise. No worries. I just have back pain fairly regularly, so I do my best to manage it. Is that so? I wonder why that is. It's most likely because my... Ah. My... my your posture, right? Always hunched over like that while reading. Yes! Yes, yes, yes. I have terrible reading posture. So that's why we should sit on the floor. Fair enough. Thank you very much, Fred the Shed. Uh, good to have you guys streaming. It's good to be here, mate. I'll go ahead and get the book. I retrieved the book from my bag. Ah, I have some chocolate as well. It's a bag of small chocolate candies that I kept hidden away from Sayori's candy radar. I take it, since it'll go well with the tea. Yuri and I then sit against the wall, teacups at our sides. As if in sync, we assume the same reading position as last time, each one, each holding one half of the book. Except this time, our bodies are even closer to each other. I can't see too well. Yuri slides closer until our shoulders are touching. How am I supposed to read, uh, focus on reading like this? Yuri was always kind of cute, but when she's being less apprehensive, it's almost more than I can handle. Your teacup. Uh, Yuri hands me my teacup. Holding it with my hand that's not holding the book, I end up in a position that makes it even harder to focus, because now I need to worry about making sure I don't accidentally touch her chest. Meanwhile, Yuri hasn't noticed a single thing. She wears her intense reading expression, and I can only presume that the world around her has faded away. I use all of my willpower to focus on reading. Reading. <sighs> After a few minutes, I finally manage to relax a little. I put the teacup between my legs and fumble with the chocolate wrapper. Ah, I'm sorry. I briefly let go of the book to finish opening the wrapper. You can have as much as you want. Ah, that's... That's okay, I won't take any. Are you sure? Well, if I touch it, then it might get smudges on the pages. Ah, yeah, yeah, you're right, yeah. I didn't even think about that. My bad. No need to apologise. I'll hold the book, okay? Are you sure? Of course. Yuri opens the book with both hands. She holds it so that I don't have any harder of a time reading from it. But as a result, her left arm is practically resting on top of my leg. My third leg. Well, in that case, Yuri is totally focused on reading again. I take a chocolate candy and pop it into my mouth. Then I take another chocolate and I hold it up to Yuri. She doesn't even look away from the book. She simply parts her lips as if this situation was completely natural. But that means I can't stop here. I apprehensively place the chocolate in her mouth. Just like that, Yuri closes her lips over it. Eh? Yuri's expression suddenly breaks. Did... did... I just... Yuri looks at me like she needs to confirm what just happened. Uh, um... Adam? Sorry. I guess I shouldn't have done that. Ah, that's... well, you were just helping. That's something that... that friends do, right? I mean... Not really in this kind of context, but yeah, yeah, that's all it was. Yeah, then you don't need to stop or anything. I see. The situation has gotten really tense. Yuri tries to return to the book, but I can tell just by her expression that even she can't focus now. My heart is pounding. Not going to say it. I nervously take another chocolate between my fingers, but this time, Yuri's eyes meet mine. How did it even come to this? Yuri does not avert her gaze. I notice her chest rising and falling to the rhythm of her breaths. I raise my arm. Ah. Like before, Yuri parts her lips, but it's different this time. I take the chocolate and place it in her mouth. I feel her hot breath on my finger. Oh, you fucking bitch! <sighs> okay, everyone. Ooh. Uh -huh. Yuri jolts back. It's time to share poems. Adam, you can help Yuri put away the tea stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. Okay, thanks. The spell is abruptly broken. I'll, I'll take care of the cups. Yeah. Yuri picks up the teacups from the floor. I pick up the bag of chocolates. 
In the end, we hastily clean up without so much as a word between us. I get the feeling this is something neither of us will have the courage to bring up. It's fucking poem time! <sighs> Goodness gracious me. Huh! <sighs> Sayori. Hmm. It's nice, I guess. Come on, I can already tell that you don't like it. Well, you don't need to worry about what I think. After all, you wrote this for someone else, didn't you? Probably Yuri. Huh? I didn't write this for anyone specifically. Maybe... Ugh, that's not really what I meant, though. But it's okay. You're making new friends, just like I was hoping. That makes me really ha happy. Happy. It makes me really happy. And you're happy too, right? In this club? Well, of course I am. Good. That's all that matters to me. Thank you, Adam. Sayori, is there something wrong? Huh? No, nothing. I'm just a little tired today. <laughs> all right. Just tell me if you need anything. I will. Don't worry about me, okay? You can go play with everyone else now. If you insist. Yay! I'm going to go home a little bit early today. Sayori, tell Monica I wasn't feeling well, okay? I'll see you tomorrow. Before I can say anything else, Sayori cheerfully walks out of the classroom, humming to herself. Got a man down. Whew. Natsuki's up next. This one's alright. Alright? Something is moving the cupboard there, am I being stupid? Uh, well, yeah. It doesn't blow me away, but there's nothing I really hate about it. It's just not really my style. I mean, that's fine. Come to think of it, this kind of reminds me of Sayori's poem from yesterday. Huh? You think so? Yeah, well, I guess if you've been friends with her for so long, you might be on the same wavelength. But you never really struck me as her type. Sayori has a type all of a sudden? Well, I don't know, but honestly, how can someone be so, uh, so, so, so fluffy and spend so much time with someone like you? It's like she's dragging around a dead weight. Fuck off! That was a little unnecessary. But to think of it this way, if it weren't for me, she would probably just fly away, like letting go of a balloon. You could say we take care of each other in our own way. Whatever it is, I don't get it. Oh yeah, I guess I'm supposed to show you my poem. Here. I'll be your beach. Your mind is so full of troubles and fears that diminished your wonder over the years. But today I have a special place, a beach for us to go. A shore reaching beyond your sight. A sea that sparkles with brilliant light. Excuse me. The walls in your mind will melt away before the sunny glow. I'll be the beach that washes your worries away. I'll be the beach that you daydream about each day. I'll be the beach that makes your heart leap in a way that you thought had left you long ago. Let's bury your heavy thoughts in a pile of sand. Bathe in sunbeams and hold my hand. Wash your insecurities in the salty sea and let me see you shine. Let's leave your memories in a footprint trail. Set you free in my windy sail and remember the reasons you're wonderful when you press your lips to mine. I'll be the beach that washes your worries away. I'll be the beach that you daydream about each day. I'll be the beach that makes your heart leap in a way that you thought had left you long ago. But if you let me be by your side, your own beach, your own escape, you'll learn to love yourself again. Lovely. Yeah, I felt like I kept writing about negative things. I wanted to write something with a nice message for once. Besides, the beach is awesome. Kind of hard to write about anything negative about the beach. So you decided to write about the beach first and then came up with a message later? Yeah, well, it's only because of what happened yesterday. I mean, after Yuri and I realised we kind of wrote about the same thing, she wanted to pick a topic and have us both write about it, or whatever. Ugh, you can really see her doing that too. Making us write about a simple topic then trying to impress me by coming up with something all fancy. Well, it's not like I care, I just did it anyway. I mean, I guess mine ended up being kind of metaphorical too. But there's nothing wrong with doing that once in a while. At the very least, it was good practice. Monica. Hi Adam. Have you thought about what you want to submit to perform at the festival? Well, being in this club is one thing, but performing in front of a bunch of people? I'll have to give it some more thought. Okay, no pressure. But whatever you do, I'm sure it will turn out great. It would also make me happy to see. <laughs> anyway, let's take a look at today's poem. Sure. I let Monica take the poem. I'm holding it in my hands. This one's good! It feels like you're not only getting more comfortable with your style, but the imagery is better than the last one I read. Just wondering, but have you been finding inspiration in Yuri's writing style? Mm, 
I guess so. You can't deny that she's talented. Yeah, totally. I think her poems are the most romantic. That's the best way to describe it. She's like a totally different person when she picks up a pen. I noticed that too. Or when she's talking about literature, it's like a light turns on inside her. Mm-hmm. Sadly, it's hard to get much personal conversation out of her. Trust me, I've tried. Who knows what goes on in that head of hers? I hope you don't mind that. In, I hope you don't mean that in a bad way. No, of course not. I just mean that I, I wish she didn't keep so much to herself. But still, defending her like that. Monica bends over. You must be pretty into her. Huh? You completely misunderstood. <laughs> Calm down! Calm down! I'm kidding! Besides, I'm pretty sure she's already got a boyfriend. Wait, really? Yeah, a fictional one anyway. Monica kind of whispers that last part to me. Monica bends over. Look at my hunch. Well, there's not really anything wrong with that. Oh, well, I, I know, I was just saying. Anyway, I'll share my poem with you now, right? Uh, all right. Uh, the lady who knows everything. An old tale tells of a lady who wanders earth, the lady who knows everything, a beautiful lady who has found every answer, all meaning, all purpose, and all that was ever sought. And here I am, a feather, lost adrift the sky, victim of the currents of the winds. Day after day I search, I search with little hope, knowing legends don't exist. But when all else has failed me, when all others have turned away, the legend is all that remains, the last dim star glimmering in the twilight sky. Until one day, the wind ceases to blow. I fall, and I fall, and I fall, and fall even more, gentle as a feather, a dry quill, expressionless. But a hand catches me between the thumb and forefinger, the hand of a beautiful lady. I look at her in the eyes and find no end to her gaze. The lady who knows everything knows what I'm thinking. Before I can speak, she responds in a hollow voice. I have found every answer, all of which amount to nothing. There is no meaning. There is no purpose, and we seek only the impossible. I am not your legend. Your legend does not exist. And with a breath, she blows me back afloat, and I pick up a gust of wind. You know, I feel like learning and looking for answers are the sorts of things that give life meaning. Not to get too philo uh, philosophical or anything, but it was kind of on my mind, so that's what I wrote about. I see. I never really put that much thought into it. In a way, it's almost paradoxical, because if we all had answers, wouldn't the world start to lose its meaning? You know, there's one thing I noticed. It seemed like everyone in the club prefers writing about things that are more sad than happy. Ha, <laughs> you surprised? I mean, if everything was okay, we wouldn't really have anything to write about, would we? Humans aren't two-dimensional creatures. I think you'd know that better than anyone. You mean one-dimensional? Ah, yeah, that. Anyway. What? Here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Are you ever too shy to share your writing because you're afraid that it's not that good? It can be really disheartening to get a lukewarm response to something you put in so much time into. But if you find other people who enjoy writing, then sharing becomes a whole lot easier. Because instead of just telling you that your writing style is good or okay or bad, they'll just want to focus more on everything that went into it and the things you can work on. It's much more encouraging that way, and it will make you want to continue improving. It's almost like having your own literature, uh, little literature club, don't you think? That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Fuck off. Finally, we get into the main event. Donna. Sorry, it's hard to read this. I'm going to change the text colours in a bit. In a bit. Um, Donna365, you are the fucking master narrator here. Deserve a Meltzer five star waiting on a poem on a poem. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's very kind. It's a weird thing because I, I think I mentioned this earlier. Uh, like on a stream last week, I, I used to get so shy about reading in front of uh, the class at school. Mr. Munn, my English teacher, would be lording. Thank you very much, Johnny. We'd be reading um, like Lord of the Flies or something like that. And I would be fucking head in my hands like that, trying to avoid his gaze so he wouldn't pick me. And I used to just fucking mess up. But I'm enjoying this. I think this is quite fun. I think it's, it's easy because it's so segmented, isn't it? Um, anyway, stop talking about myself and get to sexy Yuri. Adam, your writing has only improved in these last few days. Every poem you show me has been nothing short of spectacular. I can really feel the emotions. I'm a little envious, even. I don't think it would uh, it ever came to me this naturally. Yuri, that's the wrong way to put it. This never did come naturally to me. 
But I've been able to improve so much, thanks to you. You're really the example I was chasing after. It, is that so? Yuri gently smiles to herself. This feeling. I'm so glad I... I'm so glad I got the chance to share my writing. I never thought it would make me feel like this. I remember you mentioning that yesterday. I can't believe that you're so good at something and you've never even shared it with anyone. It's kind of a shame. Maybe, but it's not like I really had a choice. What do you mean? Well, Yuri smiled sadly. Adam, during lunchtime, I eat by myself. Did you know that? It's a great time to find a quiet spot and do some reading. In fact, I always have some books with me. You could say I really enjoy reading. Well, that's one way to put it anyway. But books are so full of amazing and inspiring people. People you want to fall in love with, or people you just know would make really good friends. Cheerful people who always put a smile on your face. Or deep thinkers and problem solvers who discover the mysteries of life. So when you look at it that way, I'm surrounded by friends every day. You know? And those friends don't laugh at me. They don't tease me for spacing out all the time. They don't make fun of my body type. And and they don't hate me for acting like a know-it-all. People say that about you? I'm not a know-it-all, Adam. It's the opposite. I don't know anything. I don't know how to talk to people. I don't know how to make people see me as normal. I don't even know how to make myself happy. I have all these feelings. And all I can do with them is read and write. But it wasn't until now that I started sharing it with you that I really understood what was missing all this time. But I haven't really done anything. No, that's wrong. Just being patient and respectful. That's, that's really important to me. I know I'm a difficult person, Adam. I speak too slowly, I second guess myself all the time, I read too deeply into things, but every time you've always treated me just like anyone else. It's so rare that I feel comfortable with myself when I talk to others. But that's why every time I talk to you, I just feel really happy. I see. Well, I treat you how you deserve to be treated, Yuri. And if other people don't see it that way, then screw them. I mean, I joined this club hoping that I would make friends, and I would say I've had at least one success. Wouldn't you? Uh, um, if you put it that way, yeah. We really are friends now, aren't we? Yuri puts her head in her hands. But this time, she's smiling as she does it. Do you want to show me a poem? Yeah, I do. Let me get it for you. Beach. God, it's really hard to read. A marvel millions of years in the making, where the womb of Earth chaotically meets the surface. Under a clear blue sky, an expanse of bliss, but beneath grey rolling clouds, an endless enigma. The easiest world to get lost in is one where anything, everything, can be found. One can only build a sandcastle where the sand is wet. But where the sand is wet, the tide comes. Will it gently lick at your foundations until you give in? Or will a sudden wave send you crashing down in the blink of an eye? Either way, the outcome is the same. Yet we still build sandcastles. I stand, I stand where the foam wraps around my ankles, where my toes squish into the sand. The salty air is therapeutic. The breeze is gentle yet powerful. I sink my toes into the ultimate boundary line, tempted by the foamy tendrils. Turn back and I abandon my peace to a road at the shore. Drift forward and I return to earth forever. Um... I'm aware that the beach is kind of an inane thing to write about, but I did my best to take a metaphorical approach to it. Yeah, Natsuki already told me about it. She, she did? She didn't say anything weird, did she? She just wanted us to write about the same topic again. I suppose to better compare the differences in our writing styles or our thought processes. Anyway, it was her idea. Knowing her, it's no surprise that she'd even want to do something like that. She probably just wants to show off. It's not like I have a particular interest in her writing style. I just went with her request, but, well, I suppose it's not so bad to write about something simple on occasion. It can be refreshing, you know? It's good for me to calm my thoughts once in a while. Yeah, I think I agree. Thanks for sharing. Okay, you three, we're all done sharing poems, right? Why don't we start figuring out, hold on a second, is it just me or did you say something strange just now? Eh? Something did sound a bit unusual. That's right. You deviated from your usual catchphrase when addressing the club. 
Catchphrase? I don't have a catchphrase. Jeez, why is the mood so weird today? Look, even Yuri isn't immune to it. Ugh. Stagnating air is common foreshadowing that something terrible is about to happen. In your books, maybe. Look, the only thing different is that Sayori isn't here. Ah, seems you're right. <sighs> Sayori always helps lighten the mood a little bit, doesn't she? It's almost like everyone's balance is thrown off a little when she's not around. Where the heck did she run off to, anyway? I thought she just went to pee. Natsuki, please show some decency, you throbbing cock. Oh, come on! Ah, uh, she actually wasn't feeling too well and went home early. Is that so? I hope she's alright. Seriously? Of all the times not to go home with her, you pick the time she's not feeling well? So much for you two being all lovey-dovey. Ah, uh, no. First of all, stop misunderstanding my friendship with Sayori. And second, she's kind of been avoiding me today, so I didn't want to force it. Ho! <laughs> USA! US! That curious expression coming from Yuri, of all people. Uh, calm down, guys. I talked to her earlier and everything is fine. What did she say? Anyway, we need to figure out the rest of the festival preparation, so let's decide what everyone will be doing this weekend. I already know what I'm doing. That's right, Natsuki will be making cupcakes. But we might need a lot of them and different flavours. Can you handle that all by yourself, Natsuki? Challenge accepted. And as for myself, I'm going to be printing and assembling all the poetry pamphlets. Sayori will be helping me design them. And as for Yuri... Yuri, you can... Guys, Monica bends over. Can you help me come up with something for Yuri? I... I'm useless. No, that's not it at all. You're the most talented person here, you know. But now Natsuki's pouting too? Jeez, even I can tell now. I guess I never gave Sari enough credit, but I can tell things are even harder on you when she's not around. Ah, that may be the case. But if I can't also be a leader on my own, then I won't grow as a person. So, Yuri, you have beautiful ha- Does she fuck? You have beautiful handwriting, you know? So you should make some banners and decorations to help set the atmosphere. Atmosphere? Um, about that. I love atmosphere. Great board game. <clears throat> VHS cassette, brilliant stuff. Yuri's expression suddenly changes as she stares in uh, at her desk in focus and starts nodding to herself. Your mind is already racing, I see. That's great. You'll be a wonderful help, Yuri. But anyway, that just leaves you, Adam, uh, the one who is truly useless. <laughs> Don't say that. In fact, both Natsuki and Yuri have some pretty heavy tasks uh, to handle. It would probably go a long way to give one of them a hand. You could always help me out as well. Well, I think I'm going to choose someone else. Uh, I would be really appreciative of that. Ah, that's... Uh, is Monica suggesting I spend the weekend with one of the club members? How on earth are they going to respond to a suggestion like that? Ah, I suppose I wouldn't mind a bit of help. Well, even if you don't know how to bake, there's always some dirty work I could give you. Uh, it's not like Monica's going to give me a choice, and uh, you shouldn't be sitting on your butt anyway. Natsuki tries to mumble a bunch of excuses like that. Um, if I recall, Natsuki, you mentioned that you would like to handle the baking on your own. Adam may not like to be around if you only make him out to be a nuisance, so therefore, he may be more suited to assisting me with the decorations. Hold on, I never said that. How hard could it be to make a few decorations anyway? Sounds more like you're just making excuses for Adam to... F what are you saying? It'll be extremely meticulous work. And baking isn't. Just what did you think? Thank you very much, Rob. Thanks for the great streaming. Adam, the massive highlight in these... Dull isolation. Oh, thank you very much, Rob. Appreciate that, mate. I've enjoyed this one. Uh, not that I don't enjoy them all, of course. Uh, just what do you think? Guys, guys, let's settle down for a moment. In the end, I think it's up to Adam to decide how he would like to contribute. Besides, Monica bends over. He hasn't really got the chance to spend any time with me yet. You know? So I'm sure he's interested in... You literally just said... I'm surprised as well. Sorry, sorry. I was just saying, though. Jeez, can we just sell this already? Yeah. Adam, you're okay with this, right? In the end, it's up to you. Ah! Of course. Hmm. Very well. You fucking idiot. Monica, in that case, everyone looks straight at me. Oh, okay, but of course I'm going to go with Yuri. Well, I'll probably be most useful helping out Yuri. The, me? Are you serious? Why would you? Natsuki, I can already tell you're about to say something mean. No, no. 
I was just saying. Oh. So, you'll be helping Yuri then, Adam. Thank you very much, Atrox. Uh, much appreciated. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> I'm glad. I have a bad habit of overthinking these sorts of things, so I think your assistance will be very useful. That's great to hear. Natsuki, will you be able to handle the baking yourself? I mean, yeah. I already said I'd be fine. Okay, okay. Everyone can tell that Natsuki is feeling a little sour. So, is that everything we needed to go over? Yep, that should be about it. Are you guys excited? Are you guys excited? Well, excited may not be the right word, but I suppose, I suppose I'm looking forward to it a little bit. Do you feel the same way, Adam? Me? Excited? Fucking too right. Uh, actually, <laughs> I guess you can say I'm interested to see how it'll turn out. That's good enough for me. What about you, Natsuki? Oh, Natsuki! What? Why is everyone yelling at me? I didn't even do anything. N no, that's not what I mean at all. Uh, uh, Yuri anxiously glances between everyone in the room. I I'm sorry for this. I don't really know why Adam picked me. And also, your cupcakes are the best cupcakes I've ever had. They go really well with my tea. And nothing that I do for the event will compare to that. So, so, I get it. I get it. I'm kind of surprised though. But why? Um, well, I'm the only one acting immature. Uh, I already know that. I'm the one acting immature, sorry. But you're trying to cheer me up all of a sudden. I know I'm not very good at it. I'm sorry if I said something bad. Thank you very much, Stone Cold Jims! Natsuki isn't the only one surprised. Monica and I are also taken aback by Yuri's words. When she already has trouble with words, trying to cheer someone up uh, must be far out of her own comfort zone. Thank you very much, Tom Hunt! Let me just read your little message there. Oh no, that was the that was the bloody thing again, wasn't it? Sorry, I, I, don't, think, I don't think there was a message. Was there a me if, if I miss your message, I'm really, really sorry, because I don't know how to get it up on this. Speaking of getting up, back to the game. Uh, but I begin to understand. Yuri was trying to sound like Sayori. Even if it didn't work out perfectly, I can tell that she tried to say something Sayori would say at a time like this. Because Sayori always helps everyone smile and feel good about themselves. No, I kind of appreciated it. I'm sorry for making a big deal out of nothing. But I'm going to say this. You better bet that my cupcake's going to be the best part of the whole event. Ah, I believe you. Yeah! I hope to see everyone do their best. But with that, there's nothing more for today. So I guess it's time for us to head out. All right, let's get out of here then. Everyone packs up their things. I start to follow Monica and Natsuki out the door as they chat between each other. Oh! Uh, um... Yeah? I turn around. Sorry. I realise that I don't have any way of contacting you this weekend. Oh, you're, you're right. I can't believe that slipped my mind. Should I give you my phone number? I think that would be the best way, yeah. Alrighty then. Yuri and I exchange phone numbers. Okay, then I'll be stopping by your house on Sunday. Huh? My house? Is is that a problem? No, not at all. I just thought that I'd be going to your house since I'm the one helping you. I, I suppose that makes sense, but if you don't mind, I think I prefer going to your house. Alright, in that case, it won't be a problem. I decide not to press Yuri for a reason. It's not like it should matter much either way, so I'll just need to make sure my room is clean. I hope I managed to make myself useful in some way. I'm not nearly as creative as you are. Don't underestimate yourself, Adam. I think that we'll make a very productive team. A very reproductive team. Even if you only chose me because you felt bad or something. Wait! You don't actually think that, do you? She's panicking now. I don't know. It's difficult to come up with any other reason. You may have... Uh, pick me. <laughs> You're forgetting the one reason with the most common sense. I chose to help you because that's what I want to do. But, but... Yuri thinks to herself with an extremely tense expression. Yuri, you're overthinking this. You wanted me to point out when you're overthinking, right? Uh, I didn't realise. I'm telling you, I want to. That's all there is to it. Do you believe in me? I... Yuri thinks really hard again. She looks straight into my eyes for a long while. I believe you. As if it took her tremendous effort, Yuri finally says and relaxes her expression. And I'm really looking forward to Sunday. Yeah, I am too. After that exchange, I make my way out the door and Yuri follows. I can't believe this. Yuri is going to be coming to my house on Sunday? 
My anxiety shoots through the roof. Even though I've gotten pretty used to handling her at this point, there's no telling what might end up happening when we're outside of school. More than that, she told me that she was looking forward to it. Is this the chance I have to make something happen between us? Or is it too early for that? Only time will tell. But until then, I won't be able to take my mind off it. I seriously can't wait. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is where we're going to end things for today. Guys, this has been the most fucking batshit stream that I've li I've ever done. This this blows the fucking octopus out of the water. Um no longer, no longer. I've been doing this for 3 hours now. Uh but I will be back tomorrow, I promise. Thank you very... I've, I've never had this sort of reception. I can't believe that you guys are, are, are quite so into this. Uh, I'm going to quit the game now, though. That is very, very much it. I will mute the desktop audio. Oh, no, there we go. Guys, uh, cheers once again. My voice is, is going. I've been talking for an awful long time. Um, this has been an absolute whale of a time. Uh, I don't quite know what to make of it, but I'm captivated. I'll say that much. I will be back online tomorrow, usual time, 8 p.m. here on Twitch. I would love to see you there again. I can't believe I'm going to do another three hours of this. How long is this fucking game? I'm not going to look. I'm, I don't even don't even tell me. We'll just go with it, and I'll keep going until the game ends or suiting. <laughs> right? Yeah, what a cliffhanger! It's about to finish. Fuck off! It's probably not about to finish. I think. By the way, somebody said, "Oh, thank you very much." By the way, I think I missed the. Oh no, we got the the hype train emo. I I think. There's not long left. No, no, no. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna finish it until tomorrow. I'm really tired. Um, and you say it's gonna be four hours, but I don't really want to do another hour of this right now. Anyway, not that I'm not enjoying, it, as I say, but great work. Emotes are being delivered to supporters. Thank you very much, Ray Denkops. Is is Denkops online? I fucking love uh, Denkops. Oh, Chris Denker. Is he online? If he's online, we will raid Denkops because I'm a big fan. He's live. First stream from the new crib. Let's get his username. That's just Denkops. Okay, guys, we're going to raid Denkops. Uh, he's got 307 people watching. Let's up that a little bit. Create a dashboard. I think I remember how to do this. Okay, I'm going to press the raid channel button and then assume this just works. Start raid. Yeah, I'm done. Guys. Thank you very, very much. I love you all tremendously. I will see you same time tomorrow, 8 p.m. Good night. God bless. Blah, blah, blah. See you in a bit.